We on. We live. Now I got to be divisive. Hardware, software. <laughs> Enter. <laughs> Producer chat. We got Craftmaster Productions in the yeah, half of the big screen. It's kind of Aye. a big screen. Hey, we're back every Thursday. It looks like my chat's cutting off, so let me fix that. Every Thursday, we are here to chat about music production and right all the back. cool stuff about it. Jimenez is here. Let me say my hellos. What's up, Jimenez? First, always, he's claiming that spot. Let me make sure I pull this up on my phone, too, so I can see the chat on my phone, just in case. Lord Mills, I was just watching your videos that I missed. Thank you, man. And Eric Skate, or no, Enric Skate. Am I saying that right? Enric Skate. What's up, man? Ankman, both together. Bam is back. Let's go. What's up, 2018, Bam? Will Moon, Will Moon, what's up? He Herman or Heman? Can't read. Oh no, Hernan, my bad. Hernan Reynoso. Hey, two people teach me a lot. Music production. Hey, thanks for joining. Grid Work Studios. Again, this is Craftmaster. Hey. Productions here on Thursdays. <clears throat> Chatting about hardware or software, because a lot of stuff happened in this past, I'd say, quarter. So we can chat about a lot. Um, just saying hellos real quick. Buckstown, Bucktowns, what's up? Checking in, what's good? The Savage, what's up? HL Productions, what's up? Caroline Thompson, what's up? Caroline. Uh, Caroline. <laughs> Is that a song? I don't even know. I just made yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's an Andre 3000 song. You did not just make that oh. up. That, that, that was yeah. Cryptonesia. Relax. Yeah. Wait, how's it go? Da, 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 She's da, the da. reason for the word, bitch. You don't remember Caroline, <laughs> bro? Come on, man. Caroline. You, you, you ain't that young. Wait, isn't it? Or is that Roses Always? Smell yeah, like it's it? the same song. Uh, okay, it's called Roses, though. Yeah, it's called Roses. Okay, I was like making sure there wasn't another song called Caroline, because nah. I was looking up UGK music yesterday. Uh, oh, oh, look at you get, getting educated into the real shit. I, I like, like that. Wow, they had a lot of guitar stuff back then. No, UGK, U, U, UGK is amazing, bro. Like, Pimp C is, a, uh, is, is, is like a legitimate musician, you know? Like... Um, mm. I know that. Yeah, he's he he was he was playing a lot of stuff, dude. He was he, he was pretty he was pretty much the Dr. Dre of the South. Very very overlooked when it comes to when it comes to hip hop history. His his contribution into into the Southern sound, like him and mm -hmm. him him and Mike Dean were um were really big in um wow. you know in you know cultivating that whole live feel that gets that you know that's that's in um Southern old school Southern hip hop. Mm -hmm. Was he on the same scene? What's up, Tex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Houston. Yeah, Mike Dean. Mike Dean started out in in rap a lot. He was producing Scarface songs, and wow. uh, and um, uh, Pimp C, UGK. They were um, they, they you know they were on Jive Records. Or, or eventually wound up on on rap a lot. Um, but yeah, they mm -hmm. were you know they were competitive forces back then. Aha! I didn't know the history. I think you said that before, but. You know, it's slowly clicking in. Um, who else did I forget to say hello to? Pierre Francisco, real quick. Uh, Daniel's here. Classy is here. What's up, Classy? I saw you in the some comment section somewhere on YouTube. <laughs> so there's Classy. GMC, my bad. I skipped over you by accident. Um, Janice is here. I feel like we're not getting our notifications sent out. I feel like, man, social media is just taking their power back. They're just like, forget all the creators that made us <laughs> popular. We're going to steal from them. Yeah. Demetrius is here. Artie's here. Okay, what's up? So let me share this since all these platforms want to get crazy. You good? What's yeah. your side? Anybody saying hello? Yeah, we got we got one in black. Afro Mia recording studio. We got DJ Sweet E in the building. We got BK Banger in the building. We got Lil Saf in the building. King Commit, So Avery. What up? What up? What up? Yo, so let's 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 talk about let's talk about that fire, bro. Let's talk about that oh, fire. Yeah. What do you that fire literally that fire? <laughs> yeah. What do you uh what what do you think about it? Uh, FL Studio Pope. I think it's different. Um, because I'm so used to thinking in my head, wouldn't it be quicker to just click stuff in instead of like pressing a button that you have to press another button? You know, I I don't know. I really don't know. Um, because I'm I'm not fully educated on the product. Did you see the launch video? Oh, video? Dude, dude, I watched all of them, bro. Like, I love 
I you know I give uh I I I, I give uh FL Studio um I trolled them pretty hard, you know what I mean, but I'm 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 I mean I have FL Studio uh, installed on my computer. I have Logic um Ableton Live. I enjoy, you know, I I enjoy experimenting with the technology and everything. Um yeah, I know you guys can't see Game's face. Um you're not going to see it. He's he's ghost face game today. My fault. But, but uh Blame OBS. Yeah, but um no, I, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of experience with hardware controllers. Like I own the I own the Push Two, I own an MPC Live, I own a Machine Jam, I have a Machine MK One. I used to have a Machine Studio. You know, I, I you know I, I I used to have a um, a Triton. I used to have I used to have a Korg. Um, I mean not a Korg. I used to have a Roland Phantom Workstation. The mm-hmm. you know the G and the X. Um, so. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of, um, you know, I have a lot of experience using that stuff. And I, I am really, um, a tremendous fan of hardware controllers in, um, in the doll world because, um, and this is, um, this is a narrative that is pushed a lot by, um, you know, different social media influencers. And it's, it's kind of like an us against them type of thing where it's like it's like hey you know you know we're the new school we don't you know we don't need a keyboard or or a midi controller to make a hit we could just use it with a we could just do it with a mouse and that that is true that is that is a hundred percent true um what i'm happy about is you know the the uh the fl fire is coming in at a price point that is manageable for a lot of for a lot of younger producers. So like, if a kid wanted to get into FL Studio and he are, and he got his PlayStation last Christmas, he can ask for the Fire this Christmas, and it comes with it comes with a copy of FL Studio. It comes you know it comes with the hardware, and he can start out with that experience of instead of looking at a screen. And I know this might sound stupid to some of you guys that have never that, that have never had the experience of making music without a computer but there's a big difference between between looking at a screen and listening to something than mm-hmm. than looking than looking at a set of buttons or a set of keys or a set of strings and mm-hmm. and making music and I'm 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 just real excited for the for the uh for FL gang for them to be able to have that experience now because there there hasn't been a controller that's integrated well with FL Studio. This thing this thing lets you select your patterns, copy your patterns, it lets you it lets you enter stuff in with the step sequencer. It lets you um you know, it lets you have um a rudimentary control of of EQ so you could kind of tweak your sounds. You could select plugins from the controller. Um it sets up it it, it sets up as a chromatic MIDI controller so you can actually you can actually play in your melodies um Mm -hmm. as as well so uh, a lot of uh, a a lot of young producers who were who who were very who were very brand conscious and you know and they want to and they want to stick to their dog now that now they have an opportunity to get an entry-level piece of uh you know piece of hardware and i think that's going to open up the door to a lot of hardware developers to you know kind of um kind of um develop products for mm-hmm. uh, for the for the hip hop beat making community because i find it uh wholly aggravating that trap music because that's what it is now it's trap music we've we've went past hip hop and we're and we're now trap music even though even though like big corporations haven't told you what to think so you don't realize that but you know hip hop music is 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 what it was it's like classic rock now now we're in the trap era trap is is you it's everywhere you know what i'm saying it's the biggest genre in music trap pushed hip hop to to this to, to where it overtook country it overtook pop now everybody in every other country is dressing like us um everybody puts an 808 and a hi hat roll and a snare roll in their music you hear that shit in fucking bb rexa country songs you know what i mean where you would never hear something like that 10 years ago so you know trap is such a dominant force yet Whenever you look at like Akai sound packs or native instrument sound packs or uh, preset banks that aren't that aren't third party, anything, anything that's pushed by the huge, huge, huge corporations, it Mm -hmm. never has anything for us ever, Mm -hmm. ever. They never give us anything. So for so for FL Studio 
even though it wasn't designed like, hey, this is a trap box. You know, we mm-hmm. all we all know like how influential FL Studio was to trap as a genre. So for that step sequencer to be manifested in the 3D realm and for, you know, uh, young men and women to be able to, um, you know, you know, use their hands in connection mm-hmm. with the musical experience. Man, it's exciting. It's very exciting. I think you um, you just sold us on that concept. <laughs> People kind of coming in from a different angle. Real quick, I just want to say hello to Blood Dragon. What's up, Halftime? What's up, Shada or Shada? Shana Wrong Blue Notes is here. Who else joined in? I saw uh, Demetrius, if I didn't say hello already. Oh, what up, Blood yeah, Dragon? People... He's, been, he's been creeping my streams. Mm-hmm. I fuck with Blood Dragon. People are, I mean, I'm looking at the responses. It's kind of 50 50, but it's more so on the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Indifferent side. I think that's, I'd rather somebody get like a, standing ovation or get booed off the stage rather than people just not saying anything you know yeah I, well i think i, I think uh, again i think the indifference comes from you know fl gang has a they have a chip on their shoulder you know what i mean because uh, because if if you're an older fl user you remember what it was like to be laughed at for using that software you know what i mean like producing on fl was not always the thing now it's it's such a dominant it's such a dominant force behind so many records and it's still um it's funny it's like j cole fans you know what i mean like j cole is the is 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 the biggest hip-hop artist you know he's the he's he's the only hip-hop artist that sells out arenas by himself without an opener you know what i mean like drake has to drake has to go on the road with with the migos and he has to go on the road with future to do the same shows that that drake does but yet j cole's fans will sit there and tell you that you know that 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 um you know that the j cole isn't successful like he's some uh you know avant-garde like not respected artist and it's the same with same thing with fl studio you know the majority the majority of urban producers use um fl studio but uh you know people they still have an us against the world mentality and because of that and because the workflow is so mouse centric that mm-hmm. to, that to introduce a controller, I could see how a a, a, a big uh, group of people would be indifferent because they'd be like, "Man, I've been making slapping ass music with just my mouse. What do I need to spend two hundred dollars for? I didn't even spend two hundred dollars on this program." Mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that was <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, because I keep it real. Subtle. But uh, <laughs> but um, no, but the that's the other good thing about this now. Um, I think this is going to get a lot more people in the, uh, in the actual, yeah, in, into the actual legal side of FL, because it just goes to show how many people pirate this software because bro, the, the, this, the, it's been out since Sunday in the image line forums, but you low, you know, like I know you can't get into the image line forums unless you're a legit user. So, Mm -hmm. so when I posted it on Sunday, everybody was like, is that fake? Where'd you get that from? I'm like, dude, it's, it's, it's in your forums, bro. Like I I don't even, I don't even go in these forums, but, um, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's going to get more people legit copies of FL studio, which is going to be a good thing for just software development period, because the more people that pay, into image line the more development that they can do on top of that um the more people that that actually buy their first piece of software they'll understand the benefit of buying software um which which you really don't get until you invest in it Hmm. that's a good point because again for these companies to grow they have to do stuff they they've never done before and this would be something that hasn't been done before for image line specifically and like you said, um, remember when Ableton used to package their like trials with all the MIDI keyboards yep. or like all the audio stuff? Yep. That's the way they kind of became popular. They just inserted their software along with made a deal with somebody and kind of partnered up, put their little software package inside the to even sell the hardware. That's a, that's so, how I found out about Ableton at first. Mm-hmm. I got it with a uh, I got it with like a two hundred dollar interface. And then, so and, now, yeah, and then once I seen what you could do with the samples, I was like, whoa, hold on. No one else could do this. Right. I think it's so real quick. So I had a note about Ableton, but also I have to ask, ask answer Josh. Um, but what was I going to say before that? What was I going to say? Oh, it looks great for people who are going to do live performance. 
because you can just hit a button to trigger something. That's a little bit hard to do with just a mouse, you know, clicking around in your screen. I feel like live, that's really going to bring in a lot of DJs too. What do you think about that controller? No, nah, it, it it definitely could, um, depending on... Dep I haven't seen that application for... Um for how it may trigger patterns but if you can you know if you could set it up to to trigger him to trigger in uh to trigger and mute patterns you it mm -hmm. would definitely be useful as a dj controller mm -hmm. i have not i use fl studio technically live every day but i never sat there and made a live you know performance i wonder how the cpu would perform because you can't be triggering a bunch of stuff and hear crackling because that'll mess up the whole set so i wonder how that's set up we'll have to investigate more fl studio live performance yeah it would um, it, it would be a completely different system though because you wouldn't need to you you wouldn't need to like trigger it on beat you know it, uh, well i i don't know if it works like ableton like ableton you can you could press it anywhere in between one bar and it'll drop at the next bar you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah they have that technology it's just kind of tucked away it's very hidden is um, it really but they have not it. many people. I mean, they have it, but it's just not. Yo, that's that. That's my main gripe with with that doll is it does have everything, but it's all hidden. Like none of it, <laughs> the, none of it is accessible. The only thing, the only the only thing that's really accessible is the step sequencer. True, and that's that goes for any DAW and any software company. You got to realize people are not PhDs coming into your DAWs. It, that goes from Ableton all the way to fl all the way to studio one all the way to pro tools like if you're trying to sell to the masses you got to make stuff easy like i'm thinking about it i was just thinking about this what do you think about this idea you know how the piano roll sometimes just shows c like the note c and then shows no other notes yeah why not just make an option where you can right click the keyboard and say show all notes like why is that difficult to do <laughs> yeah why no. do i have to go to a drop down menu and then go to another sub menu and then well, unless it's a coding thing. Well, yeah, no, I mean, uh, Studio One does that when you zoom in, but you know, <laughs> and when you zoom in, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, all you got to do is zoom in, and it sh and it shows the names of all the notes. Uh, okay, well, they okay, so they beat me to it, but <laughs> it's just little small stuff like that and time yeah. stretch in FL Studio. You should. Why do we have to click a button to activate time stretch? No, nah, that's it's like yeah, a, that's janky. unnecessary little stuff like that. But again, I'm not dictating where they're going with their stuff i think it's a great program but i also think all the programs can improve <clears throat> but anyway to answer josh real quick because he's a customer i think so josh did you buy something or is it a question about music production because if it's a question about music production we put our customers first and priority we don't just answer everybody who emails us right away you know it has to be customers get priority so if it's if it's a customer problem then you know just hit reply do it again it should pop up at the top of our queue we have, we get a lot of emails i want people to understand um so anyway i had to address that because he came in here asking yeah. about yeah. customer support yeah that's the oh man that's that that's my absolute favorite like when somebody buys a sample pack on my site and then they and then they hit me at a youtube comment they're like hey i lost my sample pack can you send me a new one i'm just like bro why dude why are we doing this on youtube comments <laughs> <laughs> i get I mean, I see where he's trying to get my attention. You know, I have a whole staff to take care of people. So it's not, you know, they should be doing their job. So this lets me know something's not happening behind the scenes. So no, I appreciate you guys for letting me know. Yeah, that's 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 okay, cool. I I'm I'm a one man band and people and people email me on Sunday at seven o'clock furious and I don't <laughs> I don't respond to them till I wake up till I wake up in the morning on Monday and they're like I don't understand why you didn't call me last night I was in it was in it was a studio emergency I'm like I don't know bro because I'm a regular person and I was on the couch with my girl <laughs> like <Right. laughs> like bro yeah, real, real quick uh, Josh did, is the concern about something you bought or is it a question I just want to know the difference so that you know we can get a little bit of context instead of people saying we don't answer emails because we do answer emails you know I just want to make sure. Anyway, so I had to address that because I want to make sure he's taken care of. But anyway, back to hardware and digital. Um, so this controller, again, so you think, OK, you think it's going to bring in a different breed of people? I don't like think it's I don't think it's going to bring in a different breed of people. Um, what I what I think it's going to do is I think it's is I think it's going to transform the FL Studio user base. Um because again, man, like 
it, this, you, you guys who've never done it, you're going to roll your eyes and you're going to, you're going to swear. I don't know what I'm talking about, but there's, there's a huge difference from making music like this with, with your mouse than, than looking at your instrument and, and, and working with your instrument. You, you, you hear things that you don't hear and you, you make, you make different decisions. Um, because when you're, when you're, when you're taking in visual information, you will, um, like engineers say it all the time, mix with your ears, don't mix with your eyes. Um, one of the, you know, one of the tricks I, I always tell people in my mixing courses is um, when you're getting close to the end of your mix, turn your monitor off and just listen. And it's, it, it's, it's a complete, it, it's a completely different experience. Um, so I think that, I think that giving FL Studio um, users an, an introduction into that, it's going to make them more curious into, um, Thing, things like hardware synths and stuff like that and and, and, and want to explore that because right now i guarantee you if you polled um you know hip-hop and trap producers who use fl studio and you said and you asked them like and you gave them a choice between like what would you rather use um omnisphere or, or you know um omnisphere or, or moog voyager to make a baseline everybody would say omnisphere you know and that wow. and that and and game you know that answer is wrong you know what I mean? And you understand how wrong that answer is. Mm -hmm. But uh, I but I, 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 I think this is going to open up more people to to try to understand why we feel like that, you know, because I know why I feel like that. And I know why you feel like that. But mm -hmm. people, you, you know, people who were people who were locked into the to the visual aspect of producing um i'm just excited for them to 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 get into to get into the head down because that's what that like when i when i look at hardware controllers and that's why i was so disappointed with the uh with the presonus atom i is i don't look for necessarily a controller that i could play i'm not looking for i'm not looking for a replacement to my keyboard midi controller what i look for in a in a in a software controller is something that's going to replace my mouse I, I, I didn't, I didn't enter music, um, mm -hmm. pro programming on a piano roll. I entered it, you know, pounding pads on an NPC. So I want something that's going to replace the mouse. I want to touch the mouse as little as possible. That's why, uh, that's why I like creating a machine from time to time, because I can make a whole beat and never look at the computer screen mm -hmm. until, you know, until it's time to bounce it out. Um, you, you know, that's, that's, that, that that's really what I want to do. Like, um, I noticed uh when i watch fl studio workflows something mm -hmm. something that something that i noticed that is really clunky and i and i had to dig so deep to find out how to do this and i never see none of you guys do this but when it like the way that you guys pick your drums you never pick them in the context of the song right so like the the way the way that i like to pick drums is i'll is like i'll i'll program a kick pattern and I'll have my, you know, my go to kick. But if I want to do something, you know, a little bit more crazy, I have, you know, I have a um, d depending on what piece, depending off I'm using machine or the stock sampler inside Studio One, I have a way that I can just like twist the knob and go in between different samples and it'll keep it'll keep playing my kick pattern but then it'll mute or I'm sorry, it won't mute. It'll keep playing the kick pattern but it'll change the sample. Everybody I see working inside FL Studio, they have to stop the music, pick a sample outside the context of the music, then sure. play the music again. So what I noticed that and 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 you can actually you can actually not do that if you guys uh if you guys go to your browser and you hold down control and you press the down arrow while you're it, it'll change the sample of whatever of whatever um, channel lane you have engaged. Um, FL yeah nfl so give give that a try yeah give that a try it's really fucking cool um control yeah yeah control down in your browser um but i like that i like that the fl fire sh um made that really easy to do like their their big knob on the top you can you can actually you can actually use that function with a big knob which is which is really cool um it's a huge difference in in sound mm -hmm. selection. It makes it way easier to find the right kick or the right snare or the right hi hat to do it like that. I never thought that small little. These are the, like the small little things people just don't think about. Like I never thought it even to think about that. Yeah, well, well because because if you come in, if you come in on an FL Studio workflow, 
you mm -hmm. you don't know what you're missing. You have no idea what you're missing. So I'm t I'm I'm t I'm telling you guys about this shit right here, and you're just like whatever bro it doesn't sound like a big deal i've been making slappers like this my whole life i don't i don't need to do that that's weird but every other doll functions the way that i'm talking about so like when i went in and try and tried to use fl studio i was just like you know like gripping my fist frustrated like yo why do i have to keep on stopping the music um <laughs> because i don't when, when you're working you don't want to stop the song man like i i never want to stop the song that's that's my whole goal is to not stop the song and mm. not and look at the screen as and use the mouse as little as possible, bro. That's a an advent of technology because when you're recording or tracking drums, there's no physical way to swap out a kick drum while you're like recording. Right. But digitally that's possible, but somehow that art got lost. Um, mainly because people just didn't know about it, like you just said. And what? I wrote down some notes. I think the one thing about the NPC days and all that is that the sounds were already like keyboards, for example, the sounds were already pre-made. You really weren't menu diving to change out the filters and all this on like a chord track, a uh, chord, uh, Chronos. No, nah. like you weren't menu diving. I think that's the main difference. Like when you go with the keyboard, you just go with the sound pretty much as is. Yeah, like unless, for the most part. unless you were like, unless you, <laughs> unless you were really, really, really about that life. But most of m most most of the producers I know, they were just they they were just into presets. I would, I me I would love to go in and like put phasers on stuff and and do stuff like that. And people would be like, "Bro, what are you doing?" You know. Yeah. That Core Chronos menu looks intense, though. Like even for me, who's it is who's, uh, familiar with sound design, it's pretty intense. Yeah, they're they're, they're all they it's it, it's it's a different layout. The way that they lay it out, you have to get used to the box flow chart. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm trying to read and do a thousand different things at one time. But also think about the iPhone. <clears throat> they build, I think somebody asked Steve Jobs, what business was he in? And he said he's in the software business. He's not in the hardware business, but he wraps his software into hardware. I think that's just the model of business right now, mainly to prevent <clears throat> piracy or piracy. Sorry, not piracy. <laughs> piracy. <laughs> What's a good G4? Uh, to prevent piracy, but also inc add increased value to the product. Because for some reason, people think a physical thing is more valuable than a thing unseen for whatever reason. I mean, for because because we're three D beings, game. You know what I mean? Like we 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 haven't we haven't ascended into our astral bodies, so we're gonna value we're gonna value hardware always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always people pe people people don't nah the, the I'm, I'm i'm being glib but the the, re the reason why people don't value hardware is because they could steal it without repercussion that's yeah. that's the, the that's why people that's why people don't value hardware people don't value music because they could steal it without repercussion people don't value music movies because they could steal it without repercussion you, you know mean software I mean? Yeah, no, the end. It, like, like that's like that's why people don't buy music. That's why people don't buy movies. Everybody's running around with Cody and and hacked fire sticks and stuff like that. Like, like this hacked is yeah, sticks. this yeah, this is the culture that we're in, bro. People people don't pay for software, and then and then on and then on the other side of it, you have you have the hackers, uh, you know, and the and like Team Air and the crack teams, you know what I mean? Who they view they view writing code as like this utopian realm where every Every, where where information is free and it should be shared from one person to another you know what i mean and then you have like the, then you have like the you know like the hashtag anonymous kids who are just like oh you know like i'm just stealing from a corporation who's you know they they're, they're terrible people anyway and they're just they're just more wealthy than us and we need to you know we need to uh um even everything out that's uh like Robin Hood, the yeah. Robin Hood story. Yeah, exactly. That's so. That's 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 the reason why people don't put any value on it. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to value, um, you know, you have to value a a, a a a polo sweater because if you run out of the store with the polo sweater, you're gonna get tackled and you're gonna get charged with with theft and you're gonna have to pay a consequence. You know what I mean? Mm. You hack you hack FL Studio and you're just like a kid trying to make it. But, you know, I'm going after my dreams. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. It's a sketchy line. What company was it that got caught using like pirated um, Adobe Photoshop? Oh, God, <laughs> I don't know. But that's hilarious. 
it was like a big company in like New York or something. Oh, like all my. Their employees. oh my God. <laughs> it was like a design company too. Oh, they pro- you know what it was? They probably didn't want to put, pay that corporate license. Yo, that corporate license is steep, boy. <laughs> Have you ever looked at it? Like like per uh-huh. user? Per user, nah. It's, I never dude, dude, it's like it's like seventy dollars per user. You know what I mean? If you got a, mm-hmm. if you if if you got an office with forty people, imagine. Mm-hmm. That's you know, there's that's what I'm saying. That's business, though, you know. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm what I'm. How do we get into piracy? My whole point. Oh, because oh, because <laughs> we were we, we were talking about why nobody values okay. uh, why people want a physical thing for value. True, true. Yeah, the, I think. Because I'm really questioning because I have so much physical stuff. Now I'm running out of space. So I want more physical stuff. But for some reason, I value like a synth behind me costs like 2000 something. But that synth can't do as much as like an Omnisphere, technically speaking. You know, but it sound it may sound a little bit different. But Omnisphere has all these menus and sub menus and all these cool modern things. I but mean, now it, that Omnisphere updated, huh? At, well, it all depends on what on what you're doing right so if you're just if you're just simply making beats to send out to rappers you know and 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 you want to do that um yeah you can you can just you could just ride out on vsts and stuff like that but if you're doing stuff like like what i do where you're creating sample packs and stuff like that bro Mm -hmm. if you if, if you've ever read read the end user license agreement for a vst there is no uh like physical physical modeled vst so i'm talking about like contact instruments i'm talking about um omnisphere that they only let you use their software within the confines of a musical work you can't use it in a loop pack wait say it one more time i got distracted trying to help a customer though thank you josh you can't you 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 can't use like you can't use since like omnisphere and uh Anything that anything that that's sample based, you can't use it in in a loop pack. They want they, they they if if they find out that you're losing their their sounds in your loop pack, they'll they, they'll hit you with a cease and desist because it, it as be- is or like tweet. What about tweet? No, they, bro. Read the, read the Omnisphere uh, um, end user um, end user license agreement. It's it, it's within the first paragraph. It, mm-hmm. and and it says like on their fact like what if i you know what if i do heavy processing to the sounds and they're like nah bro no sample Wait. packs music only i think my question to you is do they mean the actual samples or do they mean the sound that comes from the samples they mean they mean the sound that comes from the samples mm-hmm. that's interesting yeah it's um, it's super interesting so again what i was getting what, what i was getting at is is if you're like if you're into creating like music libraries or if you're into creating um if you're into creating um you know loop kits and stuff like that that is that is where something like something like a profit or a moog would w- would would be really um would be really beneficial to you mm-hmm. because 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 those are th- those are just signal sound generators there's no there's no restriction on those you know what i mean mm-hmm. you you create the sound you want to make something sound like a, a a bell or an electric piano on your profit you do it um you own it it's yours and then and then you could choose to use it whatever way you want mm-hmm. but can't you do the same thing with omnisphere as a synth versus like the sampler portion bruh Talk to Spectrosonics, bro. It's very, very, very clear in their end user license agreement. Like they, they went to great lengths to spell it out. And I was, you know, I was, I, I, I was, I was looking at the Easy Keys uh, end user license agreement. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's the same thing. Like they, 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 spe- they call out loop packs. They're like, yo, you cannot use this in, in loop packs. Hmm, interesting but i think because i want to explore this well we we only touch on the surface i'm sure there's papers and papers and papers and paragraphs and paragraphs on it but you know isn't it the same thing okay so a sawtooth a sawtooth from omnisphere versus sawtooth from a moog or something behind me the 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 reason the reason why it's different game is because the sawtooths from omnisphere have been sampled right they've been sampled from a moog so once so once that sawtooth is sampled it becomes omnisphere's sample right it stops being just a generic sawtooth it is it's moog sample of a sawtooth hmm. which that's, that's i think the gray area because 
then that's kind of saying that they own a sound waveform. They kind of like sketchy. It's they 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 probably they probably pay to license them. I mean, I don't know the back end. I'm just like as a consumer, I'm just like this. Like, how far are we gonna go? It's kind of like Monsanto. You know Monsanto. Yeah, they probably. own corn now. Like they yeah. literally own corn. Yeah, like, how yeah, do you yeah. own something yeah. that grows in the earth? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they they patented it because they changed the, the 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 DNA of it. Terrible, but maybe it's the same kind of parallel. They kind of it's like GMO corn. No, like, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's the same corners. thing. It's like it's like yo, we altered this. This is this is our proprietary product now. And 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 we're gonna because I, what a lot of people don't understand is is when you buy software you don't own it you just you just purchase a license to use it on your computer mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean like if if like I don't know dude I'm maybe I'm a freak but I actually I actually <laughs> read some of the shit that I agree to you know what I'm saying. <laughs> It's yeah. it's it's especially when I'm out here making these products. So that's why that's why when you buy like Jake One sample packs or you buy like Shroom sample packs, or you buy Ill Mind sample packs, um, they tell you the gear that they used, and it's all it's all hardware sense because 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 legally you you are not allowed to use most uh if if it's a sample based synth like Omnisphere, mm-hmm. you can't you can't use it for a loop pack. That's why I was trying to steer people away from these, like, you know, Nexus banks, Omnisphere banks and all this type of stuff. Like people don't realize. Like, for example, Nexus specifically, they you can't it's like the sounds already in there. It's a rompler, right? It's like a disc. It's like a bank based uh, synth. So nothing in there is really like a raw sawtooth that you're changing anyway. It's kind of like a prebuilt sound. So when people are making Nexus banks and stuff, they're remember Johnny Giuliano's Nexus bank? Yeah, they all dude, all that shit is 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 he modified a preset and saved it. You know, he he like changed the filter of it. Those right. those those um bro, Nexus third party Nexus uh preset banks are the biggest rip off of all mm-hmm. time. Of all time because all they are are just are, are just are, are just uh are, are just all they're doing is is they're curating the the existing presets and maybe changing some of the effects on it there's there's no sound design in it whatsoever it's just like it's just like here's here here's the presets that i like you know they they're not they're not adding anything to it they you know they figured out how to save fxps and the same thing the same thing is true with Omnisphere presets, you guys that are buying Omnisphere presets, you're getting jugged, bro. Straight up, people are stealing from you. What's happening with Omnisphere presets? This is how this is this is how people make Omnisphere presets, right? And it's crazy, bro. Like, like, like this. This is another reason why you gotta buy your fucking software, man. Because when you when you pirate Omnisphere, right? You pirate a five hundred dollar piece of software. And when you pay nothing for something, you have no incentive to learn it, right? So I wanted Omnisphere for years. I saved up. I kept on buying synths that weren't as good as Omnisphere. And by the time I bought three synths that weren't as good as Omnisphere, I was like, man, I could have bought Omnisphere. So I finally, I finally bought it. And I bought it. And in the beginning, it was hard to use. I was like, yo, what the? What, I can't believe people like this. And... um because I spent the five hundred dollars on it, I forced myself to use it. I was like, "No, there's no way I spent five hundred dollars on a piece of software, and I'm not going to use it. Like, what am I going to look like spending all this money and not learning how to use the software?" So I mm-hmm. learned about this feature called um, it's the uh, it's the uh, it's the sound lock feature, right? And what sound lock does is you can t- is okay so you could go say uh you go to um say you like the in memorand in in memoriam bells like Mm -hmm. everybody's favorite preset right in memoriam Mm -hmm. one or two that's everybody's favorite preset and the reason why people like it is because the effects chain is set up in a certain way so like all you guys that are buying these dumbass omnisphere kits all people are doing is they're going to their favorite presets they're engaging the sound lock feature so that it keeps the same effects that's on the that's on their favorite sound it keeps the same envelopes and lfos that's on that's on their favorite sound and then all they do 
is they change the wave, right? So instead of using, so instead of using the, uh, you know, the um, whatever sound source um, those bells use, they'll just change the sound source, and it'll have the same vibe as the as the in as the in memoriam bells, but it won't be it won't be the same exact sound. And that's all that they're doing. You can, I can, I can right now make the same omnisphere packs that people are selling to you for forty dollars i can make one in 40 minutes mm -hmm. and it, it it would take it, it would take zero effort on my part and it takes zero effort on all these uh, on all these quote-unquote sound designers part like if you see any young producer making only omnisphere kits and they haven't and they haven't created a drum kit from scratch if they haven't created electro presets if they haven't done any real sound design they, mm -hmm. they're they're ripping you off bro straight up i mean i like that angle to it i mean breaking it down like that it's just it's a weird lane because then we can get into that ties into the whole creative uh so anyway there's a difference between um hardware and software in that aspect because again this is hardware in this wait hardware in the digital world so that's one aspect to it and the reasons we still have advantages using hardware you know, this conversation kind of dips into the whole like YouTube fair use. Then we get into copyrights and free speech and all this type of stuff. So it leads to a whole bigger monster. But as far as the sound community, I do agree. There's a difference. I should let me plug up my let me turn on my cord just so people can like hear the difference um, in sound. It just has like this. I don't know what it is. We think it's like a resonance or like a depth to it that hardware gets that software just cannot emulate. Like some software sounds really like in your face and that's it. It sounds so flat and like lifeless. Yeah. Omnisphere sometimes has those presets which have that depth, but some presets don't. I'm not saying it's a bad thing though. What do you think about the differences in sound? Well, I mean, it, there's there's definitely there's definitely a huge difference um in in respect to uh in respect to um hardware synthesizers like that 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 is it's subtle but undeniable and the difference is the the difference you can describe it as um using like a USB mic for your vocals and then using a microphone with a preamp there is there, there's like a level of there's like a level of um of depth you you could hear like like th you you could almost hear it in like three D which which that might sound like kooky and 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 and, and like um you know like it's like it's crazy but it's true and that's mm. and that's the, and that's the reason why those pieces cost you know two thousand three thousand dollars to this day um the other the, the the other the other advantage that you get with say something like a uh, like a like a Korg Karma or, or, or a Korg Kronos or a Yamaha Motif or um, a Roland Phantom is if you have a is if you have a great interface and you mm -hmm. have and you have a decent preamp you can you can really run it through an analog signal chain and 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 when you and when you run a digital synth through an analog signal path that will create that uh, that s that that three D um essence to it um in the in, in the actual space and that's why when you go into studios you know even though even though like for example a rolling phantom is washed you might not want to use any of those sounds but people will, pre will prefer to record your piano from uh you know from 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 an uh um an outboard rompler just to get the effect of recording it audio into the daw um but that you only get that um that benefit if you have if you have a good signal chain if you have good preamps and a good um and a good interface that's you know recording it like 96 or 192 true and a lot of people haven't even experienced like the difference between an audio interface because how do you a b audio interfaces like what at what point of your career do you do yeah. that usually <laughs> even at the store they don't even do it yeah at the it's, store. It, you you really can't you really can't you really can't get into it uh, until you make the splash i think i think presonus has has made it so that you can um 
that you can that, that affordably you can get the difference they ha they have a they have a three hundred dollar version of the interface that I have of the one ninety two and it records at you know one nine it records at one ninety two and uh twenty four bit and then it also it also has preamps on it that push enough gain to like power an s m seven b which is which is a hard mic to power just off of typical phantom power so it's like it's cheaper than a uh it's cheaper than an Apollo, but it gets it gets you that it gets you the same exact sound quality, which is which is pretty amazing for three hundred bucks. But you have to the, you can't a b it. But once you actually put it in your studio and you hook your speakers up and you listen to and you listen to the music coming out, you hear it instantly, instantly. Mm -hmm. Counter some good. <laughs> oh, you were asking me a moment. I didn't see your question. Korg synth. It's called a Korg Chronos. It's a keyboard workstation. Um, I'm going to preview it in a second. But he was saying you were, people were saying you were speaking like a different language, Chinese. Oh, like damn. Japanese, oh, damn. Japanese. Oh, my but, bad, bro. Nexus, yeah. Nexus, Nexus, Nexus. Yeah, Nexus. <laughs> Ping pong <laughs> delay. <laughs> Hard work with, ne with Nexus. Dance Orchestra oh, Volume 2. D dan oh, yeah. With the, <laughs> that brass hit that everybody was using. That brass hit and the tube bell. It's all about sound selection, people. You got to know where the sounds come from. Let me show you real quick what like the difference in a Korg sounds like. Now it's a piano. I'll have to find like a Korgi sound that's not a grand piano. But I'm going to step to the computer real. I mean, not the computer, the thing real quick. And uh, dem demonstrate this thing. Oh, where's my sustain pedal? Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, can you hear it? Yeah. OK, I can't hear it, so I don't even know what it sounds like. Actually, here. Let me do this. All right. I mean, you can go on. I'll I'll back you. I'll back you with some church music. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> congregation, we are brought here today to explain to you the virtues and the divinity of the hardware world. For it is from hardware from which we came, and is from hardware which we will go back to when we are returned to the earth and we leave this earthly realm to ascend. <sighs> Man, I don't hear no it's church music. Out. No, I can't, I can't hear, hear. I can't hear nothing. Can't hear nothing. Nope. What about here? Nothing, bro. Nothing. Nothing. You can't hear that. Nah, you failed. Oh, that's right, because you're not hearing the audio from the thing. Okay, that was a complete fail. <laughs> <laughs> I'll demo. Here's what I'll do. Hardware I'm fail. Like girl, hold my like shirt together. I feel like a straight girl doing that, but um. I forgot you can't hear the audio stream, duh. That was yeah, that was that was <laughs> you can't even hear on the live stream. Nah, son. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm an idiot. I don't even have it armed. I'm so slow. My bad. Tell me if you can hear it now. Okay, you got you, you got a little sauce coming out. You hear it? Yeah, you got a little sauce. Okay. <laughs> the only thing is I can't hear you while I'm playing it. So oh yeah, I can. Let me do it. Let's try this again. My bad, people. We're going to make this a bit. All right. I don't even know how to play church chords like that, but we're going to see. All right. I'll let you go on your sermon about how hardware is uh, <laughs> taking over for the kids today. I think that I, I think the main thing is, you know, it's I think we can all agree that it's not a necessity to be creative. It's not a necessity to make great music. It's not it's not a necessity to make a hit. But there, there is a value to it. Um, there's something, there's something that's really cool about um, turning okay. on just just turning on your board and being able to play without without having to uh, without having to open up a sequencer or deal with latency or anything like that. Um, Adrian Young who did uh he scored the um he he scored a couple movies he provided the samples to DJ Premier for the Prime 1 and 2 albums he's produced albums with Ghostface he has uh, some amazing sample packs and um you know he started out as a he started out as a producer um you know just chopping loops and doing drum patterns and stuff like that and he issued a challenge uh, that I that I thought was really cool. And he was telling all the producers, you know, like for 30 days, like just kind of walk away from your DAW and uh, pick an instrument and just and just try to learn it, you know, as best as you can within 30 days and kind of and kind of open your mind to to that to that aspect of creation. 
and what it and I've done that before and and really what it does is it allows you to focus on different things where when you open up a doll you're you're focused on like how to make a song, how to arrange it, how to mix my kick, you know, getting the right sample so on and so forth. And when you practice on an instrument, you're just you're just thinking about making something that sounds cool. You know, just something, you know, something that speaks to you, something that something that evokes an emotion. And I think that that is that's a step that we as producers who work in the digital uh, realm, we kind of we kind of minimize because we have so many musicians talking down to us, telling us that we can't do that. So we kind of we kind of we kind of uh, clap back by saying, hey, that's not really that important. But. I think it. I, I think it's a good idea for everybody to try out at least once. Can you hear the music? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, thought I was just doing that in vain. All right. Um. That, okay. That was my best backing track. It was a little low in volume. We'll have it. I have the organ preset tied up next time. Let me take these headphones off. Out. I mean. <clears throat> anyway. You went in. You went in. I was trying to. Somebody told me to play. Uh, Still Dre. <laughs> <laughs> me off a little bit but it was funny um anyway we'll do it we'll i'll practice that next time i gotta get my church chords down my diminished chords and my augmented what do you think the easiest instrument is to play a game wouldn't you wouldn't you agree it's a bass guitar easiest instrument yeah i'd say the piano because you can play everything on the piano no but i mean like i mean like I know that you that you can play anything on the piano, but uh, but bass guitar, like I don't know. I feel like you can be a you can be a you can be a bass player way quicker than you could be a keyboard player. Mm, the thing about bass for me is like the um the strings are so thick, like it's hard to slide your finger on the string. You'll cut your finger in like the first day. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta build up your calluses. That's the that that's the part nobody tells you about playing a, a a guitar or a bass. Wait, it signed me out of my own chat. What the heck? Hold on. I remember I remember when I was get when I was trying to get a buddy to teach me guitar, and the, and the reason why I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna learn this. He was uh, he gave me the guitar. Hold on, I still have it. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Gave me a guitar. Snoop Dre. So he get, he gives me the guitar and he teaches me how to tune it by ear and everything. And he's like, all right, bro. So this is what you got to do. You got to, you know, just sit on the couch and you want to put you want to put your fingers on the strings and really mash them in, you know, and, and to the point that it hurts and just slide your fingers up and down the strings, um, you know, until you build calluses. And I was like, I was like, nah, bro, I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> the, <laughs> I gave me the chills. Yeah, just thinking about that he's like he's like nah that's that's that's, that, that's what you got to do i'm like uh i'm like nah nah i don't think uh i don't think i'm gonna do that at all i think i'm gonna <laughs> I, I think i'm just gonna keep programming the i think i'm gonna just keep programming the um the piano roll but uh thanks thanks king davis is um you can use rocksmith have you ever heard of rocksmith it's like guitar band but with an actual guitar no that's a, that's the oh i have heard of rocksmith i was thinking I, I was i was thinking about using that but again man the whole sliding the fingers bro like that shit is you gotta the, that's the that's the one thing about like guitar players and bass players that i admire uh like you gotta you gotta experience some pain like you you gotta really want to do it you know the the uh the cost of entry into into the digital world is nothing bro like it's nothing True, <laughs> you know you don't you, you, you you'll never develop any pain from that i was just listening to a really good sax player on this new r&b album by let me give him a shout out because the album was really good just give me two seconds to find it and i was thinking them master because you remember a lot of producers used to say you need to master a lot of instruments yeah to us, our instruments like virtual instruments like Omnisphere, Electra X, um, Silent, aren't those instruments to us? Those are those are definitely instruments. It's it, it's it's it, it's all a paradigm shift, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I feel like I, I I feel like I'm extremely proficient in Omnisphere. I feel like I'm extremely proficient with Contact. Um, extremely proficient in Massive and Serum and and. Uh, any any type of subtractive synth i can you know i can i i can i can perform really well with you know subtractive synth 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, or just, you, you know, since the start with a wave and then you take things away. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, do you know Masego? The artist Masego? I think I'm saying that right. No, nah, I never heard of them. I don't believe. Oh, I was going to say, they deserve a shout out. His album, uh, Lady Lady, was really well produced. Like, it makes me want to study producers again. So where do you think, okay, here's a side question. I know this is random. Where do you think artists find these producers who, you know, like there's producers who make like trap beats. Okay, we get it. When you make trap beats, you can learn that type of thing. But then there's producers who like produce, produce. Mm -hmm. Like you can hear that they threw everything at this track. How do people find those type of people? Especially in R&B. In R&B? The, mm -hmm. the, the, the R&B, the R&B folks that I've been around, um, R&B, R&B is such a, is such a different, is such a different vibe as far mm -hmm. as, as far as work. Um, because it's still, it's still, um, I don't know how I, 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 I don't know how to say it without it. W without sounding like a douchebag, but it's still it's still like musician centric. You know what I mean? Like right. people people who produce R and B they play mm -hmm. they play like they they play like a few instruments. People who people who typically produce R and B now that now that trap soul is kind of be being called R and B that's changed a little bit. But like the the R and B that I, producers that I know in Miami and the singers that I know in Miami, they are still the type of people who, you know, singers don't singers don't sing at home into into a laptop. Singers singers write a song with typically singers will write a song with a guitar or a, mm -hmm. you know or a piano and they'll and they'll have that song and then and and then you know um they'll meet somebody who is like who is like hey i'm mr music industry you know what i'm saying and i have a friend and then they'll connect the artist the artist with the really good musician they'll exchange ideas and and the um the singer will wind up will wind up giving that energy to the producer who already knows how to play and they'll come with their references they'll be like hey i was thinking about this 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 and this like um i have a i have an r&b artist that i'm working with right now out of miami and she's she, her references she's given me is um ella may and then like and then like four different k-pop artists right so mm -hmm. Uh, so like I'm tasked with making, you know, like these low key urban piano jams and and somehow incorporating K-pop breaks into them, you know, so that's that's how that's how I think that these that these things come together. It's it, it's the uh, it's the references of the artists and um, mm -hmm. and just how they get plugged in, because because I, I, I got plugged in to uh, to this artist through uh through studio connections, you know, I've never met, I, I've never met an R&B artist off my beat site or from, uh, or from YouTube for that matter. Yeah. Like you said, it's a different mindset. <clears throat> it's kind of like if we have an idea for producer merch and we just have the idea, but we don't really know how to execute it fully. We have to go to somebody who manufactures and knows all the ins and outs of manufacturing to get it exactly. you know, fully produced as a thing. That's a good, you help me kind of understand their journey. Because again, when somebody takes a raw song to a studio, it has to be like expanded upon. And yeah. that's what, that's what separates a producer, in my opinion, from an engineer or just a, or a, a beat, beat maker. maker. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, a, a, a producer to me is somebody who, somebody who, who, um, like, uh, uh, like my other R&B experience was like this. It, it was the same thing. It was a, it was I I had a um you know I had I had people in my circle and it was you know it was this it, it, it was this it was this nice it was this nice Jamaican girl and they was like yo I I need to get her with a producer ba 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 I'm like all right you know what I mean um and they they were gonna come work in they were gonna they they wanted to do some pre production before we actually went to the studio and and this is just how awesome it is working with r&b people i was like listen man like i don't i don't have a preamp i don't have a mic you know i i just do production and he was like okay no problem he came he showed up with a pre uh, with a presonus channel strip and he showed up with the road nt1a he's like this is this is what you can use and i was like 
I was like, I could use it. He's like, nah, it's yours. Just keep it. Just, you know, you, you know, give me these tracks. And, you know, the, the singer would come in and she played, um, you know, she played piano and she would just, she, she would, she would, uh, I'd set her up on the keyboard and she would play, she would play her chord progression and sing over it. She's like, all right, this is my idea from the song. So we would mm -hmm. take, we would take her chords, throw them into, throw them into the DAW. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, you know, what is what is it you really want to do? Do you want this to be a piano jam? And she's like, no, I want it to, you know, I want it to sound like EDM. Oh, okay. So, but I had to, but I had to build an EDM track around, you know, a, you know, around her chord progressions. And mm -hmm. that's, and that's, I think that's really how um, I have, um, I have a comment that's, that's on this too. You're saying R&B tracks, uh, the better ones at least, uh, will most likely always come from a producer who is either an accomplished instrumentalist or had a very broad understanding of how live music can be used with samples. Um, mm -hmm. And I would be, I would be the latter. You know what I mean? So I was able to, you know, from my sample library, I was able to find the core progressions that she wanted, you know, find like some vengeance samples and stuff like that. Um, because, because you have to, you have to have a, uh, you have to have like a musical lexicon in, in, in order to go to R and B. Cause R and B is like, R and B is, um, especially nowadays it's, it's like pop where you know how pop borrows from whatever the the most edgiest genres are yeah. and then they completely take away the whole edge of those genres like when <laughs> like, like like when miley cyrus did wrecking ball and they ruined dubstep oh wow I mean, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what i mean like like that's uh, i think that's the best example of that r&b um they kind of do the same thing, but but they sensualize it instead of in, instead of taking away the depth the depth from it. They or, or I'm sorry, instead of taking the edge away from it, they add depth and make it you know and make it sensual and emotional. Um, at least mm. at least the really talented R and B producers do. You said they add depth. Yeah, they yeah they yeah they'll add yeah. yeah yeah they'll add depth and emotion to it. I agree. I was listening to again Masego. Did I even plug him? Oh yeah, Masego's album, and like the guitar on there is just different. Like it starts off with guitar. So for example, I feel like do you do you think guitar will ever be emulated to a really good degree in software? In software, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, just off your gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You think one day if somebody's going to take all those samples, all thirty thousand? Yeah, it, it, the yeah, it, 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 it will. Some, it's, it, it, it's going to be a passion project from somebody. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like, do you think that's a? I think we talked about this before, but do you think that's a job for Spectrosonics? Dude, it's definitely a job for Spectrosonics. If anybody could do it, Spectrosonics could do it. I mean, they've already sampled every 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 synth. They've already sampled every keyboard. They've already mm -hmm. and and they've done it and they've done it with bass. You know, if you use if you use trill if you use trillion, you can make you can make a real funk bass line. You can make a real you know a real soul bass line. Mm -hmm. Like you can make real jazz bass lines. That 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 shit happens. You know, um, for that for that solution, if that were to happen, I would pay up. I would pay a good price for it. Like even up above a thousand bucks. Everybody would everybody would pay over a thousand bucks. You know what I mean? Because the people, the people who would buy it, it wouldn't be a product for hip hop producers. It would be a product for people who are doing sync licensing. It would be a product for, for people who are doing movies. It would be a product for people who are doing, you know, like TV scoring. It would be a product for people who are, um, you know, who are in that type of, uh, that type of field, you know, mm -hmm. it even would, hip hop. Like I was listening to Lil Wayne and Manny Fresh is the Carter. Mm -hmm. A lot of tracks had guitar in it, like a lot of them. Even yeah. though that's like a dated album, but I feel like the, the, okay, a little, little, little. <laughs> I feel like people's lack of access to musicians is the reason they just don't use a lot of guitar. Like it's the producer not putting guitar in there because they have all the software. They don't feel like you know getting a guitar sound. In my opinion, no, yeah, wrong. no, that's that's facts. I mean, you can just, I mean, people you could just look at like the wave that like Lil Peep was on before he passed. You can look at the wave that uh Young Thug and Gunna have been on the past couple years like the uh, um you know Migos, Narcos. It's it, it's it, it people uh, guitar is a, is is an inherently like American 
vibe. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and like hip hop and trap, they're inherently American genres. So it it really makes sense to use those elements inside of you know use the guitar inside these genres um but really the only way that the only way to to introduce it into your tracks is to go on splice or sounds.com and download those samples and then build around them you know or uh you know uh i i'm I'm gonna have i'm gonna have the ysl sample a guitar sample pack coming coming very soon to studio one tutorials.com sick man sick (laughs) Yeah. yeah it's there's a lot guitar is like the one thing that just can't be like it's just not done well in software in my opinion i've spent a lot of money on it so i'm talking from a perspective of even spending money on it but one other concern about guitar in the software is um like all the little things you do with the guitar like just a little slot just little stuff no like this slides, the slides like, playing muted going going from muted to open power of you know power slides yeah dude I feel like no. it could take a long time just to program it into midi like because i have stuff like beer twos electricity beer twos acoustic guitars you can do a lot of stuff but you have to like program every single note perfectly with the velocity and it's like a lot of work just to get a simple guitar line where you could just play it by hand yeah but so is so is learning guitar so <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> so so i mean i i, I mean it's it, it it's all a matter it's all a matter of your comfort factor because again you got to remember you, you got you you got to you got to kind of um put yourself in the shoes of somebody who doesn't know how to play instruments you know what i mean for somebody who doesn't know how to play instruments that that level of programming would seem natural to them because that's what they're used to that's their default hmm. have you ever seen the video with sax brothers like or the brothers sax something like that the company that makes emulations of the saxophone no for contact i think it was no he played the the mess out of that keyboard he made it sound so real it was scary i think that might have been a different company that made yeah it's a different company but still have you ever tried um here's another random question (laughs) have you ever tried the big band sound what's up zatra no, who's that? Who's that by? The big band library is by. It's like uh, it's a grip too. Let me see. Big band is it East West? No, it's some like niche company. It's a Broadway big band. Fable Sounds. No, oh, no, I, I I usually I usually stay away from stuff like that. Um, it just seems like it, it. It just seems like like if I was into like if I was into like doing syncs or. Or you know, if I had a plug for that, I I I would get into those libraries. Like I seen I seen a library from Eight Do that was like forty four tubas, and I'm just like, fuck, I'm gonna do a forty four tubas, bro. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to program a marching band. True, I, I respect eight. I respect those libraries like Eight Do, um, Sound Iron, because it just brings again. It's like film score is a whole different world. I want to show people how to do film score. But it's costly. Like it's not cheap. Have you ever? Have you ever? Have you ever? Have you ever scored a piece of? Uh, have you ever scored a piece of film before? Before I had like you know the top stuff. I had contact strings and like all that type of stuff. We used to do videos on it. Like um, no, but I mean, have you ever? Have you ever? Have you ever actually gotten a you know got scene? gotten a scene and and oh. and and given it a shot? Nah, the business side, no. I'm it's, not, dude, it is not even. I had a, I had a chance to work with an indie film director, mm-hmm. um, on a couple, on a couple scenes, and dude, it is so fun, man. It is like, it is, it, it's just, it's so much better than making rap beats, bro. It is, you know what I mean? Because you have like, it. I had like the scenes that I had. It was, um, it, it, it was a movie about a, a, about a tow truck driver who was who was a car thief. Um, you know what I mean? And he would, and, and yeah, and he, he would, uh, he, he would tow your car and then go and say, what he would do is he was towing drug dealers cars. Um, but anyway, like Grand Theft Auto. Well, go ahead. yeah, 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 yeah. Auto it's, it, 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 it was a very Miami centric movie. So it was all about CD underworlds anyway. Um, so I got a chance to score a couple scenes for it and they were like, you know, they were, they, they weren't like, they, they weren't like string emotional type of stuff. It was, it, it, it was, um, you know, like kind of like, like kind of like action. 
um, scenes and everything. And it, it, it was really cool because because I kind of the way that I experience sound is I experience it by color. All right. So okay. Synth whatever. Synth Go ahead. Synthesthesia or something like that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. People always people always get weird when you tell them that you uh, that you do that because they don't believe it, because the way that the way that it's written on Wikipedia, it kind of makes you sound like a superhero. <laughs> um but you know and but it's it's just it, it's i i don't know i think it's normal so like so like when i hear when i hear like when i hear music i hear the colors and um so you know like i i, I was matching the colors of the scenes with the colors of the sounds that i was using and it, and it was syncing up and it was just like it was just it was just such a crazy thing to do um and it was fun because I was using I, I was working with my partner who was a guitar player because I needed guitars on it. And um, it, it was just fun. Like you're just cracking up the whole time, like just like, oh, what if we use this chord or, you know, and and then, and then like and then like we're playing stuff that sounds like because you can experiment with it. You're being free. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm playing stuff that sounds like that sounds like a. Uh, like a like a lifetime movie and then i'm going into like um i'm going into like wildlife narration over it it's just it's just a really fun process i think it's something that that everybody should try like take a like take like take a scene from a movie download it off of youtube mute the uh, mute the sound put it put it in your daw and and, tr and try to score it you know see what you got man that, that that might wind up being your true talent you know everybody isn't um Everybody isn't a hip hop producer, man. You know what I mean. Everybody isn't. Everybody isn't destined to produce for the same ten artists that are uh, mm -hmm. that are on the charts. You know, there's there's other avenues out here. Yeah, we got some questions here that are pretty good questions. So we're gonna answer those in a second. Um, but also, yeah, I agree. Um, it's a little more free form, and I think that's what throws people off. It's so free form that you're like, what are the rules to to film score? I, t you know, I, I, I tell you what the start. big rule is: turn your drums all the way down. <laughs> that's, so hip -hop drums. <laughs> yeah, turn your drums all the way down. That's the, that's what I was having like the most trouble with with um with sending the stuff back. Was uh, they were just like, yo, you got to turn your percussion down. We don't need all that because mm -hmm. because film audio film audio is amazing, dude. Like you really don't have any like like you think you're a badass if you if if you mix a trap song and get the eight oh eight right, man. Like the stuff that they do in movies like every mm. single sound that you hear is 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 put into a daw you know every single sound that you hear is recreated there's nothing there, there's nothing in a in 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 a film that is that is mic'd live mm. nothing mm. whatsoever i did not know that oh you mean okay you mean as far as like they don't keep the raw i'm lost in what you mean here Okay, so 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 if there's a fist fight, mm -hmm. all of all of the punches all of the punches come from sound effects. Oh 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 oh. Okay, they don't use the actual. No, this is the actual sound yeah, of the hit. Yeah, dude, bro, bro, most mo most of the most of the dialogue is dubbed back over. Hmm. You know what there's I mean? There's a lot of work. I was like, just even working with Jay, who came from a film background, he shot all the music videos we have. A lot of music videos still on deck. Yeah, no, that my, my my guys in the chat are saying Foley. Yeah, no, they, it's it's recorded off the Foley, but you have to bring it back in. You have to bring it back into the DAW and sync it up. That's what that that that's what that's what's amazing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just seeing the process. Like Jay would, like to us, audio is a thing. But like to to video people, audio is really a thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, huge. It's huge. It's it's seventy five percent of the process. Mm hmm. And I was looking at the price of just that big band library I was talking about called Broadway. I might even buy it because I like I really want this sound. Let me see if I can play a demo. Uh, just kind of like recreating that. Um, that uh, like instead of sampling all the time, I want to create my own sample sound without sampling. Yeah, no, that's that's the, that's the wave, bro. You know, and, and instead of you know, instead of instead of you know, instead of uh, buying sound packs, if you could be proficient in, in creating your own, you know, mm -hmm. that's. Uh, uh, so that, I think film score is, is worthy, but again, this library just for this library alone, and this is just one library, not let alone the Vienna Library, Symphonic Library. This one's two thousand two hundred ninety-five. Yeah. I think it's worth it because it's such a unique sound. I haven't heard it anywhere else. I think it's worth it, but again, to start out and have to 
you need that library to even make the music. You know, it's it's a whole different ball game. I also want you to look up the Vienna, I think it's called Vienna Symphonic Library, and look at that cost for that library. Not you, I mean everybody else. Um, let me see the price here. The price is so. It just shows how my point in saying all this is that film score is a beast, and I think the prices are so high because of films. They Bro, have that shit. Prices. That shit is fourteen thousand dollars. Fourteen G. It was yo, eleven. <laughs> yo, a musician's friend is fourteen thousand dollars. Fourteen G. That's fuck. more than the, um the, the waves mercury bundle or whatever yeah bro this is this is the this is the uh this is the hand zimmer uh this is the hand zimmer super pack bro super pack <laughs> and to think you have to know all the yeah the even the mercury bundle from waves is only eight thousand. Yeah. so this is this is what i'm saying like getting into this field is is it just attracts different people because to even begin you have to have kind of a bankroll yeah, but this, I this think is... the reason they have so much money is because when films get funded, it's other people's money. It comes from like raising capital, like all that type of businessy stuff. It's not like out of somebody's pocket. No, yeah. For, plus, 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 films have real budgets. You know, mm-hmm. there's, but that's a. I mean, I mean, that's all. That, that's all changing with like the Netflix world and and guerrilla content and stuff like that. That's why. That's why so. That that's why so many. Uh, that's why so many movies are aren't using the orchestras anymore. They're using. Uh, they're using hip hop songs. Hmm. True. You know, they got they, 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 hip hop's just like the move anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, think about it, bro. Like Despicable Me. They had they they had Pharrell score those movies and those movies are just are just eight oh eights and and three chord jams and for and and and, and Pharrell's over here just stealing the whole the whole the the whole score budget you know do, doing it all on a fucking Korg. <laughs> mm-hmm. I you love think it's it. a lost art because I forget I didn't mean to cut you off because there's I saw a video of people filming an orchestra in a studio somewhere I forget what I was watching oh man I just watched it was it a UAD commercial somebody i don't know my point was do you think that's a lost art like hiring a whole orchestra to come in and play a piece for hell, a movie and stuff? hell yeah dude the last the last person who did who did that kind of stuff at least at, at least in at least in our um genre is is kanye you know mm. like kanye would kanye would go and get the uh kanye would go and get like the whole choir for 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 uh for um he did it on college dropout and late registration, and then and oh, then, hire out the whole choir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I heard, yeah. It, heard it on Masigo's album too. There's, it, choir adds a nice something to something. I don't know what it is because well, probably because I grew up in church. What's up, Doc Cal? Well, yeah. Not only that, it's humans. It adds it adds humanity to the music. Anything, any that I there's I put voices on all my beats because you know I do I do a lot of I do a lot of quantized music. And mm-hmm. it's just it's just to have some type of vocal sample in there. I need like some type of humanity on it. It's just it's um, I just think it sounds better. I never thought about that. Let me ask the chat since you are here. A couple folks are here. Should should we get into film score tutorials? Show you how to save some money instead of spending eleven thousand dollars on them. <laughs> Holy crap. I think but, you know. Here's another thing. I but those, about. but those, those, those libraries, those film score libraries. Like you remember, um, you remember uh, the song um, from Watch the Throne, Ham, that that Lex Luger produced and uh, with Kanye. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah. If it, yeah, if you listen, if if you listen to like, if you listen to those strings, right? Kanye Kanye re- replayed those strings like those like 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 those like those like he he made like to me that's one of the most beautiful trap songs of all time because he took he took Lex Luger's Nexus sounds and his like his basic chorus and then he he put like it, or um and then he brought in like the actual chorus and had them sing and then those strings I'm pretty sure that those were from those those Hans Zimmer libraries that you're showing me. Like that's like, like that's where you get those crazy articulations from, and that you know that that super that super legit cello sound and stuff like that. I was gonna say thanks to Martina, we now have access to East West Composer Cloud again. Compl- I think it's called Composer Cloud X this time. But the samples, there's so many samples that okay. Here before I get into that rant, thank you, Martina, for one. Um, but secondly, I was going to say, 
what people might have a problem with with film score is like sound selection like how do you know when to use a cello how do you know when to use a viola section how do you know but when that's, to use that's that, that that's that's the fun part game is 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 there is is there is no rules to it you know there's there's classical film scoring which which that's all good and everything but like like that's what i say if you ever if you ever want to try to to try to score something like go to youtube and just get something that you like rip it off of youtube google how to do it i'm not going to tell you how to do that on youtube but you know you know google how to do it and then d- does an fl studio have a does an fl studio have a video player yeah i was did i yeah, yeah I, I show people how to use it when i was editing my music video yeah fl studio has a video player studio studio one has a video player i i use studio one i use studio one two two to uh to 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 do my little bit of score work that I did man but scoring th- that's something that that's something that when you do it like you got to get paid for it you know because it is it is very like I did I did two 2 minute scenes and I and I put 45 hours of work into it mhm yeah, just, this is not going to be like some free course my bad I didn't mean to cut you I didn't know you were making a dramatic pause <laughs> I thought that was a <laughs> go ahead oh uh, you should have learned that by now I'm the king of the dramatic pause but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, there's it's, it's I put 45 hours into it, man. And if you're going to spend like 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 if I'm going to make you if I'll make you trap beats, you know, I, I, I'll knock those out in 45 minutes an hour. If I got to if I got to spend a, a work week on two beats, you know, you're going to pay me for that. Mm-hmm. And now I lost my train of thought. Yeah, this information that I'm going to give is not going to be like the whole course for free on YouTube. Like it's definitely not going to be that way because film score is a firstly costs a lot of money to buy the plugins. Secondly, I can show you a cheaper way to do that, but still, like it's it's information that's valuable. So I'm not going to give away everything on YouTube. But even if you just want to get started, I I, let me see, let me Google myself, let me YouTube search myself. Yeah, but uh, film score. You back? But yeah, no, I got. I got I got people asking me to do film score tutorials too. I'm not I'm not doing film score tutorials. No. Small <laughs> little chunks. Like we have one, two, three, four, five. About six tutorials already on YouTube. People just don't look. Yeah. I mean, and those are free. I'm not gonna go in about like everything about everything, but still, it's free stuff right there. But, yeah. I, do you think it's, it's mainly sound selection keeping people back though from it, or do you think it's just no, they don't know? no, no? It's no, it's the mentality of of uh, of being uh, of being creative. You know what I mean? Because the 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 way the way that we create the way that we create a three minute beat is it's it's real. <sighs> I hate to I hate to sound like I'm downplaying what we do, you know, and sound like them, but I'm also objective and honest. Cr- creating a three minute beat, it's a it, it's it's a repetitive process, you know, especially especially like especially like once you're good at it, you know what I mean. You you know like what drums you're gonna use, you know what sounds you're gonna pick, you know what genre you're in, and you just go boom. And you and and you do what you got to do, right? Film scoring, you have to you have to look at something. And if if there's dialogue in the scene, you have to create music that matches the emotion of that dialogue. Um, and there's no and there's no click track to it. A lot of the times, a lot of the, a lot of the times you're not doing something that's quantized. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you're like you might have two string chords like like while the question is being asked. And then when the answer's coming, you might do a walk down on the piano you know, and then, and then have like an Omnisphere texture underneath it, you know, Omnisphere actually makes film scoring pretty easy, like with their playable textures and some, uh, and, and some of the names of those presets. Like if you go by the, like a lot of the presets in Omnisphere, like they're, 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 they're named very disingenuously, but their, their film scoring section is like pretty dead on. True. That, that hit section. Yeah. Dramatic hits. Yes, sir. That's all you need is like yeah. the one thing. Yeah, yes, sir. Like, like, like yeah, but you, but you got to. Um, I think that's and, and the other thing is, is um, film scoring is a. Uh, It'll never get you famous. You know what I'm saying? We're we're in the Instagram era where oh man, this is something I wanted to talk about. I wish we would have done this in the beginning, right? So I had I was on a I, I was I'm in this Facebook group. It's called the Producers Corner. And um, 
there was somebody who was having a problem in there. They had they they had a song mixed by their by a famous engineer. I believe it's in Atlanta, and this engineer has a tag, right? So this engineer put this engineer put his tag on the final mix, right? And he's he's he he's a very prolific engineer. He's one of these engineers in Atlanta that's that like um makes makes like he makes your music better you know he doesn't just mix the song but he's also doing the vocal production for the artists uh Mm -hmm. doing like a bunch of dropouts on it reversing stuff like really you know like really making the most out of the song it's not just somebody you know doing gain staging and leveling um and and the producer was so offended was so offended that 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 the engineer would put his tag on the beat now this is this is something that when Sunny Digital started that, you know, that producer union bullshit and then everybody was like, oh, 2018 is the year of producer. We're going to get our recognition and all this and, and all this fucking stupid shit. Right. Mm. I told people I was like, listen, you know what I'm saying? First of all, producers are not stars. OK, the star of the song is the vocalist. That is the way that the music industry works. It's been working like this for 100 years and it works good. OK, producers are not supposed to be stars. They're not performers. We're inside people. We want to be in the studio. You know what I'm saying? We are we are background people. Right. So because there has been like five famous producers in hip hop, you know, in the past and that now this generation has like 10 famous hip hop producers. Now everybody thinks that they should be a super producer. And what that has done is it's creating a culture of of I want recognition too, right? So a hit, uh, 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 um, the hip hop beats that you hear on the radio, hip hop and trap beats that you hear on the radio today, if if we're honest with ourselves and 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 try not to get triggered, guys, if we're honest with ourselves, they take an hour or two to make, an hour or two max. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and if and if and if and if and if and if producers were um super competent at mixing we would be getting the money to mix the tracks right but we're not but we're not mixers that's a different that's a different skill set we're not and we're not tracking the rappers so now we have we have in we're 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 in this place where we're talking down to the engineers with like oh well what did you do to the song that you should get a tag all you what'd you do you boosted 200 hertz and 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 compressed the vocal and now you think you should put a tag on my music like bro those engineers uh, turn your pre-production into real music that people could hear. You don't know how to make an 808 that people can hear on a fucking cell phone. The engineer does. And he knows how to do that because of because of his extensive knowledge. The engineer right. is the person who makes who makes the rapper sound in tune when he's doing his terrible singing. All right. The engineer is the person who does all the vocal tuning. He's doing the vocal production. He's doing a significant amount of work. And now because you've got this now because you've got this uh, this this uh, this everybody gets a trophy cult culture demanding their trophy when you know when they make a hit record, you know, we can't just let the stars shine anymore. So what's next? Now the producers start putting tags on the song. So what happens after that, bro? The everybody who plays a role in a hit record should have should have a tag on the song and should be recognized. Like like it's 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 it's, it's the most it's the most dumbest immature like just baby crybaby culture of all time like mm-hmm. producers get credit they get credit in the album credits right and that's and and that's all the credit that you need if you're if you're a producer and you feel like you need credit because you're not getting paid well then you need to work on your business you know what i mean like a a, a tag a tag in fame is not proper compensation for your work. So now you're salty with engineers because they're starting to put tags on it, but everybody pays the engineer. Nobody gets a free mix. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and I think that, and I think that's, um, and I think that's the problem um, with this. And I, and I was just, and I, w- I thought I was just so like, just, I was so tickled by the irony of here is here's all these producers who cried for a year that they weren't getting enough credit um because their role belongs in the background if you're a producer your role is the background you're not on the stage okay point blank period 
Mm-hmm. I don't, it doesn't matter that there, that there's a handful of famous producers. Most producers are in the background. Okay. What now, happened to? Uh, oh, I didn't know you're going in on a point. You said yeah, now. Go ahead. Now, <laughs> now, for for you guys to look at somebody who is way more talented than you and say, "Hold on, you didn't contribute anything to the process," is super disingenuous. It's immature, and it makes us as a community look like idiots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all- wrong to say. The mixing engineer has no like s- uh, contribution to the sound because I was listening to a rock album yesterday. The only reason it sounded good was the mix. It was the amps they used. It was the compressors they used on the snares. It was the this or that. So a lot of these videos that show the producers breaking down their beats, talking about they don't mix their beats, it's because they don't know how to... Well, it's not they don't know how to mix. It's that no, it's because they don't know how to mix mixing. game. It's because they don't know how to mix, bro. I I know exactly what stuff what stuff you're talking about. Like the people that people uh, worship, like Metro Boomin, um, uh, TM88, when they're doing their genius tutorials, and everybody's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see how he gets his 808 to hit." He doesn't know how to get his 808 to hit. He doesn't know how. He mm. doesn't know. The engineer knows. You know what I mean? Those the, those guys those guys are watching our tutorials. Straight but I would up. Say sometimes <laughs> straight up. So, sometimes it's more so like corporate boards and corporate rejection. Like I've done a lot of things for other people's companies mm-hmm. and like I'll do it to where I know my audience is going to like it, but then a company will come back like can you change this? Mm-hmm. So basically they're making the final decision. So maybe producers are saying I'm not going to have the final decision anyway. Anyway, they're going to give it to some other mixing engineer. Why am I wasting time trying to mix a track that they're going to change it anyway? Because I've heard plenty of stories. I've been in studios with platinum producers, Grammy winning producers. They say it all the time. They're like, yo, my mix was way harder than the engineer's mix that they put on this track. And these are people who have many years. I was in the studio with Rico Love, as a matter of fact. I don't I'm know. Not, bro, I'm not talking personal. about I'm not talking about Rico Love. I'm talking about trap producers that don't know how to make an 808 translate on an iPhone. Oh, well. um, I'm 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 talking I'm talking about I'm talking about that guy. That guy has no business acting like he's more talented than an engineer. Point Blake. Period. Mm-hmm. The amount of the the amount of the, the first of all to be to be an engineer, you have to like like producers like to act like they invest a lot of money into their craft. You don't invest the type of money that somebody who owns a studio invests. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, an an, an eleven seventy six is two thousand dollars. Mm. You know, and you you won't even you won't even buy the plug in version of that. A distressor is three thousand dollars. You won't you won't even pay for this for, for the slate subscription for that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm like I'm a producer. OK, but I'm but 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 I'm 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 always going to be honest with you guys, bro. Like you, you the, the only the only reason why you don't respect what an engineer does is because you never sat with one. You know, what I mean, go 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 into a studio with a guy like Lou Diaz and see and see what they do. Yeah, they have the same plugins that you do, but you don't know what you're doing with them and you don't have the ears. Like engi- engineering is something that it's 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 something that not everybody can do. Straight up, not everybody can do it. There is the, the, there there is a level there is a level of hearing that you need to be able to be able to do that task, you know what I mean? And there is, there is, there is, and that's why there's so many old engineers, you know, because, because those people, those people, those people are special people, you know, they're, 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 it's, 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 it's not something that everybody could do. Hey man, we're live right now on YouTube. Can I call you back? What okay, happened? Thanks, bro. Oh, yeah. oh, you, oh, you on the phone? My bad, I had to answer a call. Um, <laughs> What was I saying? Okay, I heard you about. Okay, was that the guy from the Waves tutorial? Diaz. Did, oh yeah, Except he just Lewis? yeah he just he, yeah he just had a Waves tutorial. He's uh he was um he was one of the um he's one of the resident mixers in Circle House. That's mm-hmm. that that that's how I know of him when when he was um whenever 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 I would whenever we would do a song. Uh, that mm-hmm. we thought that we thought Mike could do something. The next step was to was to raise the money for a Lou Diaz mix. 
you know right. that that was the process like if like if like like whenever i was working with an artist and it was like and it was like yo we got something here we got to get the 800 dollars for the lou diaz mix mm -hmm. you know it was never like it was never like why are we paying lou diaz 800 dollars? we knew exactly why we were paying lou, lou diaz 800 dollars. we knew exactly mm -hmm. why we were taking that circle house section you know what i mean but there's this th there's this culture um online you know because you can do so much in a doll and mm -hmm. and we're using a lot of the same tools that that are in studios that were that were very foolishly very foolishly diminishing the uh the knowledge and and the overall talent of these engineers and um my challenge to anybody who says that who says that they uh that they don't need them then go ahead and do it you know set use them as a reference mix and and you know get the get the same rms get the same slab you know get you know get the same spacing do the do the same things that they do if you're so good and then and then if you and then if you are that good go out and start a business man but um the uh it's it's going to become more and more a topic because more because I can see it more and more like like 2018 was the year of the producer 2019 is going to be the quote unquote year of the engineer because more and more engineers, especially in the trap genre, are becoming more of an essential part of uh, of how music sounds like, for example, that phaser that used to be on two chains voice that was um, that was a specific engineer in Atlanta. And because and because he came out with that sound for two chains. Other rappers came to him and they wanted their own, um, spe you know, different effects chain. So he wound up designing stuff for Ross and he did it for this guy and he did it for that guy. So no, you know, no rapper is coming to you saying, hey, I need this. I, I, I need this special thing for my sound. No. What the rapper is saying, hey, need beats. And you know what your fuck ass is doing? You're sending them free beats because 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 that's what that's that's how much of a commodity a trap beat is there's so many people who could do it well that the value of it is so low but an engineer the value of it is so high is because it's such a it's such a profound talent and it's such a profound gift that not everybody could do it i could teach anybody how to make a trap slapper i can't teach everybody how to mix True. I mean, I think it's, I think everybody has their own role, but I think if you're going to get into that situation, you just got to make that agreement. Like, it's just like when you get a website developed, I don't want the company's tag all over the website. It makes it look kind of cheesy. So we have to make an agreement before they even start developing that website that they're going to take away that little, you know, that digital tag that says yeah. made by whatever on it. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, settle that beforehand. Blood Dragon. So here's, okay, before I get into the next big question, let me just, we had a lot of questions before. I just didn't get a chance to answer them. Blood Dragon says, um, you know, there's a guy, K Sound Def, yeah, K Elib. Yeah, um, Kevin. He makes commercial music it's on Studio One, I think, or whatever his doll is of choice or machine. Yeah, I've heard his stuff. Um, we did his challenge a while ago. He's kind of in and out of YouTube land. But if you want to get into like the commercial, commercial music, just grab a ukulele or grab that piano that they use in every brain commercial, like every health commercial. <laughs> Those are like the two main instruments, that one piano and that one ukulele sound. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so I have a big question, but I wanna make sure I'm answering all the in-between stuff before. Anyway, so before I get to those in-betweens, what do you think about the DJ rapper duo? Cause you mentioned producers are supposed to stay behind the scenes. What about the days when the DJ was on tour with the rapper and they were just as big as the rapper? Well, I mean, I, I mean, D, DJ DJs are DJs is a completely different skill set. You know, like uh, the DJ was the first famous person in hip hop. You know, it was it was a DJ first, and then came the you know the shit talking jit with a mic that that came afterwards. So so, so DJs were already like super talented right because they had they had rudimentary equipment and they were doing amazing things with just with just record players and a mixer you know they were able to they were able to extend songs and 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 you know and keep the party dancing no crowd control um you know be, being able to harmonically mix before there was cheat codes like mixed in key and stuff like that um you know just just being able to do it by ear that's why back in the day the best the best producers were DJs um mm -hmm. so 
those DJs earned their fame because because they were the people who brought the crowd to the party, right? When you mm-hmm. go when you go to see uh when you go to see a uh, Amigos concert, the list of the people who produced the album aren't on the flyer. Right? You don't go to mm-hmm. ticketmaster.com and and buy a and 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 buy a ticket to uh to a concert of music that was produced by 808 gods and smitty and 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 whoever you, that that's not seen you go to but see it, you go to see the goddamn egos you know isn't that what isn't because you said producers are supposed to be behind the scenes but what if they're a producer that's prominent like metro missy elliott well, Missy, no. Let's let, let let's not let's not just call Missy Elliott a producer, bro. Missy Elliott is a Missy Elliott is is a legendary innovator, you know. Okay. Well, Murder Beats Metro, like the Purdue Dub where we know him as just producers, not even Sonny, because he's an artist slash producer. Yeah. So just like Metro, does Metro rap? No, I think he did come out with a song. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he tried, but uh. So like Metro, Murder, their names make the song. No, their names, their names do not make the song. It's that that that's a that, that is a per, that that is a perception. I've never seen. I've never seen a Murder Beats instrumental playlist on title. Right, mm-hmm. never, never, not once. You know what I mean? Like, like murder. Like, w- w- what happens? W- what happens with like super producers and stuff like that is because, especially now, is because we're in such a we're in such a um a cycle where everybody wants to stay safe so you'll have you know like like you'll have your Lex Luger moment where he you know he took southern hip hop and and really you know cemented the trap genre and made it something different and then and then everybody mimicked him and then you had Metro come out where he he was within the confines of what Lex Luger was doing, but he twisted it enough to call it his own. And then he had his run. And then, and then now you got murder breaking off and, and you know, like he's, he's twisting it and doing his own thing, but nobody is going to an arena to see murder beats play songs. Mm, I think that's false. It's not false. It's, it's 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 not false. The only way the only way that those guys can get in front of big crowds like that is at a festival game. Yeah, but 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 aren't but they if, leveraging a product called the song to get in front of the festival? No, no way, bro. Because like, all right, I, I t- I'll tell you what. You got bread. Let's rent out. <laughs> let's rent out the American Airlines Arena in Miami, Florida, and we'll have we'll have Murder Beats as the headliner. Just Murder Beats. And 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 are you confident that you could recoup on that? But isn't no 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 no, uh, no 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 answer my question, Gabe. Answer my question, Gabe. Do you well, think that you could? There's a lot of businessy stuff behind that question too. It's kind of a framed question. No, it's not a framed question. I've I, I've I've got a bowl that can fit twenty thousand people. All right, and we're gonna have and we're gonna have murder beats. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know his. He's not Drake famous, but I mean, he's famous. Yeah, famous. It, it, exactly. So he can't. Neither can Metro, and neither and neither can no one else. Listen, I get it, bro. You you're you're trying to uplift the the producer community, but we got to be honest here. You know what I'm saying? Like we we have to be honest about uh, 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 about the place of producers. They belong historically in the background. There are there are some outliers who can who can generate fame, but really we're we're looking at it from from the lens of music creators so so our so our viewpoint is is way different than the average fan you know what i mean the the average fan doesn't care about the producer they never have ever mm-hmm. there's the, there's been can... there's been like a couple like like there's been timbaland right so everybody everybody cared about timbaland but what did timbaland do timbaland also rapped right everybody cared about dre but what did dre do dre also rapped everybody cared about kanye kanye also rapped everybody cared about havoc havoc also rapped everybody cared about rizza rizza also rapped you see what i'm getting at here the people I mean, the, the okay. people who don't put their voice on the beat you don't really care about them too much why can't we like for a, okay so i mean i think okay we can respectfully disagree but i think my point is that so for example i love pharrell neptune's beats i loved them when fabulous was on it i loved it when who else was on their beats um uh philly's most uh, wanted clips birdman Galise, birdman oh, clips. Yeah, clips. You're right. nori 
Nori. Nori. So, I mean, I think that's what makes me excited about being a producer is knowing that I can reach that level of, um, like, uh, what's the word? Not level of, not notoriety, but level of awareness, being a Pharrell, being a, um, a Timbaland without his artist history, being a Dr. Dre without his artistry, being a whatever. I think that's like what we want to be, like the pinnacle producer. So, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you think that what's a super producer in your definition? Does it exist? Yeah, they they totally exist. The super, uh, as, as, to to me the to me the tenet of a super producer is somebody is somebody who has came out with an instantly recognizable sound that has that has had more than a one year string of hits. Right. So, um, you know, Dr. Dre. You know, span you know, spanned eras. Um, Rick Rubin, spanned eras. Um, Pharrell, spanned eras. Timberland, spanned eras. Um, you know, they did, they did, they did more than have just a hot run. Scott Storch, spanned eras. You know, you you could go, you could go to these people, and and they can and they can make you a hit record, right? That's mm-hmm. that that's what a super producer is, in, in my opinion. They can they can take a talented art a, a talented artist artist. And it's it's not a marginally talented artist. It's got to be you know a, a, a talented artist. They, they could take a talented artist and just put them out of here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I mean, I think my main concern is where do we draw the line of leveraging other people's talent? Because it seems like I'm not saying this is all the way true. That's why we're having a conversation. But it seems like the disconnect is the art. The producer is not allowed to leverage the artist who collaborated with them to make a song. It's like, Oh, I see where you're going. Okay. Okay. This is, this, this, this is interesting. I I like this. Go on. (laughs) It's like, why can't they brag that they had a Drake placement and that's their sound per se? Why can't they say like, why do they have to do everything themselves? Like, isn't a producer known to work with other people? Okay. Well, let me, okay. So, so, okay. So I, so today you released a, you released a tutorial, right? Yeah. Yeah. What well, what was your tutorial? What, uh, what was the title? Like how to sample like who? Low Easy. Does Lil Does Lil Wayne sample? He has sample beats. Okay, he has sample beats. But let me ask you, game. Why did you Why did you use Lil Wayne's name instead of Street Runner? Because he has Carter Five coming out. Uh, yeah, People it, don't know Street Runner. exactly. That's because why. the fucking rapper is the star game. <laughs> because because funny. because the rapper is the star bro and and the reason and the reason why the reason why you chose to use little wayne's name instead of the p instead of the guy who produced the uh, the the actual records that are you know famous from his sa- that, that are famous from his sample sound which is street runner is because that's that that's who it is now now that's not to say that's not to say that um that we're out of line for wanting to leverage our our success in the music industry to do greater things you know i'm not i'm that that's not my point it, it, my my point isn't isn't that but my point is to more is to more bring it down to earth and really and really be conscious of of like look man when you focus on this this is my belief when you focus on the fame part of making music, mm-hmm. y- you don't you don't get it. You don't get it, right? Like I'm sure I'm I'm sure if me and you were able to talk to the super producers that I listened to, or, or that I listed, and we asked them, and we were like, "Hey, uh, hey, Pharrell, hey, Dre, um, you know, what was what was uh, what was your pursuit of fame like, and and and, and your leveraging of uh, of your um artistic contributions with uh with different artists they would be like uh i don't know bro like i just you know i'm i'm kind of just like playing music and having fun and kind of creating the best vibes that i can and you know what i mean like those those are the answers that 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 we would get and um i think when you know i think when when you have when you have an influential voice and you're and and, and you're teaching um people who are coming up you know uh uh aside from teaching them the software also teaching them the mentality of creation is important you know what i mean like it, it's great to aspire to make the pinnacle which is which is to be a super producer like like that's what you want to do but the steps to get there isn't focusing on being famous and we have and we have a lot of people in the producer community 
who were who were fame oriented. Do you not agree? Um, yeah, I mean, that's what makes it exciting, though, don't you think? No, that definitely makes it exciting. That that definitely makes it exciting. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, I don't I don't aspire to to be at that level like I I'm a competitive person, but it comes from it comes from my drive to want to compete and create. And you know that through competition and creation and 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 just and just creating a great product that that's going to come. You don't you don't have to make that you don't have to make that a focus. Like if the reason why Metro the reason why Metro is is getting to super producer status is mm-hmm. be- is because he added something new to the culture. The reason why Lex Luger had super producer status is because he added something new to the culture. You know what I mean? It's it's and I think I think there needs to be more emphasis on on that aspect of it and less and less emphasis on on the why am I not famous yet type of vibe. Does that make does that make sense? True. Like yeah, there are kids who just like DJs specifically, like <laughs> I, I used to go to school with a lot of DJs who just wanted to be popular. But I mean, everybody has their motives, right? Um, here's a, a counterpoint real quick. There are some super producers who are just not famous. Yeah. Like they're not really like street famous. Like I've known there's guys with tons and tons of, re- I mean, tons and tons of records. That's probably all of them. Like AO, the producer, like, like Alex, the kid. Like it, like I, 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 I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Isn't it the producer's problem that they didn't brand themselves to become famous? Because they have hits, they have plaques, they have all this stuff, but they're just not, they're not metros, they're not all this, but they have tons more credits than them. What do you think about that situation? I don't think, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that not being famous is a problem. I think that, I think that not being paid is a problem. Mm-hmm. True. Fame, yeah, f- fame, fame doesn't translate to money. Like Sunny Digital is famous, is famous as hell, and he just and he just did a podcast about about how about how messed up his money was. You know what I mean? So yeah. I guarantee, I, 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 it was from producer grind. I guarantee you that 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 Sunny Digital wouldn't mind switching bank accounts with Frank Dukes right now. Oh, you said Sunny Digital? Yeah, was like. Yeah, like, bro, like, bro, I'll bet you, dude, I, I, dude, I'll bet you, I bet you, Frank Dukes has 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 an amazing bank account right now. Like, bro, I know a, I, I, I've, I've met like, I've met a, a Lamborghini driving, <laughs> mansion living producer. Probably nobody knows who he is. He's he's he uh he started Pitbull's career. And produced and, and produced a bunch of produced a bunch of hip, of commercial hip hop from 2005 to like 2009, right? He mm-hmm. was he he was a huge Miami producer. Made makes so much money off 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 of his songs that you know he's got a he's 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 got a condo in a high rise in Miami. He has got a huge mansion in Kentucky. He just built he just built out this uh this uh this community studio learning center in um i think in downtown louisville mm-hmm. all all on his own financing his he's 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 created generational wealth for himself mm-hmm. and you don't and nobody knows who he is right if you go look up go look up a- a- anybody want to know about this guy go look up hugo diaz he's a goat he's lou diaz's brother right mm-hmm. you see his face you don't know you don't know who he is the man the man drives the green lambo that all the rappers rent okay that is that is that's what we really want to do you know the whole the whole um the whole being recognized and and people knowing us like do you really not want to be able to walk around outside because be, be, because you make beats like is that is 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 that the trade off you want do you really want to not be able to you know go ride a roller coaster with your little brother because because they got to shut down the goddamn park because 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 you make trap beats like is that is that really what you want your life to be like mm-hmm. you know what i mean like what about well what about because i talked to a lot of people who say they don't make music for money not saying that you shouldn't get paid my point is i know a lot of rich people who are i don't want to live their lives i don't care how much money they make they're not influential they're not really doing much to change the world 
Like you have money, okay? What's yeah, but what, game, okay? yeah, but game. Your drive, your drive is different than a musician. You know what I mean? Like you have, like, like your, like your initiative with, like, like with your mailing list, with, uh, with you know, offering the free Bibles to people and stuff like that. Like you, you, you come from, you come from a a, a whole different motor than mm -hmm. than than just wanting than just wanting to make beats and get placements because i think i think if you really wanted to make beats and get placements you would make beats and get placements but you're you have you know you have you have a different set of motivations with with what you want to like uh influence with the education system like you have a whole different set of goals you know what i mean and you got to kind of you got to kind of um you got to kind of put yourself in the shoes of of somebody of somebody who just wants to make music and and uh and uh, have a career of it you know what i mean because because it, it, influence is great but not but, but not everybody is built to be an influencer you know what i mean but 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 we have we we have this culture with with youtube and twitter where where we keep where we keep telling all these kids like yo you got to brand yourself it's so important and uh you know you you, you know you got to make sure people know who you are so they you know so they click your beat stars link and and um all of that when uh when really when it all comes down to it when we get into production what we want to do is we want to make the coolest music possible and we and we want to connect with rappers and and singers to make the best songs possible. That's mm -hmm. that's that's really what that's the like like for example for me, I'm the type of I'm the type of musician that that I want to make I want to like I want to make classic shit, you know? I want to make I don't I don't care about making the single like like if I was like if I was to get on a Rick Ross album, I wouldn't want to produce the single. I would want to produce like um I would want to produce the um the Birdman diss, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah, like that's the, that's, awesome. the, the, that's the record that I would want. I would want I would want that album cut that every that everybody knows because because the messaging is so poignant. You know what I mean? Yeah, I forget the song, man. I like that sample too. Yeah, um, yeah. Jay I, Jay Z and them use that sample, but the yeah. but 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 the whole thing is is that is that we have is there's all different types of people who come into music for all different types of motivation, and I think we're in a weird spot right now because everybody who wants to use music, they watch you, they watch me, they watch Av, they watch Internet Money, they watch MG the Future. You know what I mean? Um, they you know they they're watching K Sound they're watching us so when when we come out and we tell them like listen it's it's th this is this is where you need to put your head like i don't i don't want to box i i don't want to box nobody in into thinking that you know it's super producer or bust you know what i mean there is you know a lot because a lot of musicians are introverted games there's levels to it i gotta run to the bathroom real quick if you could hold it down but if you could speak on the levels between so people don't give up just because they're not making a million their first year, like that type of stuff. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, dude, I'm, su I'm, I'm super into that. I mean, first of all, when it, when it comes, when it comes to making music, if you're, if, if you're, if you're into creating because, because you want popularity or notoriety, um, it's you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time because because your your heart and your focus isn't gonna be isn't gonna be into the music like you should be you should be making music that that you get excited for like your excitement shouldn't come from 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 getting from from getting on somebody's album like that's that's a byproduct of a uh, of of your love of creation it's not it's it, it's it, it's not the end goal it's not the um it's not the um it's not the end of the journey you know what i mean like i like i sit down at my daw every day to make music because because it's it, it it it's what excites me like we're not like everybody else like we don't we don't we don't watch tv you know what i mean like we're not we're not trying to you know you know we're not trying to sit there on sunday and watch every single football game and play fantasy football like we, like we ain't like we ain't normal people we we exist through um through the love of making air move and turning it into sound and um 
and uh you know just 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 make it just making cool stuff and the way the way that in my opinion you you make the biggest impact is is by making um you know just just amazing music that motivates somebody else to make even better music you know what i mean and that's and that's another thing that the uh the you know that the super producers do for us you know when metro drops it it, it it's like it's like wow how do you do that i want to be better than that or when murder beats comes with a you know comes with a, a a brand new drum pattern that you never heard and you're like hold on wait bro did he just put the snare on the one did he put the snare on the one and the kick on the two hold on what did he do and you're like and you got to break it down and analyze it um people use this term a lot uh, uh, pu uh pushing the culture forward you know that's what that's th that's what we get into hip hop for is to I, I i call it i call it writing our name in the book you know just just putting your name into history and being able to say and being able to say hey look you know i you know i contributed something i i started this wave or i carried that wave or you know people started you know people started using this sound because of me or people started um you know using this 808 because of me that's why it's so like I get so, you know, I, I, I get so freaked out by like how many songs have the spin is the spins 808. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it. It sounds good on everything, but there's so there's so many different amazing packs. Like, why would you not want to put your own um, spin on something or put or put your own sauce on something? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, because that makes me think about um, the New Jack swing era back when like Teddy Riley was just slaying everything in R&B. That was an amazing time. <laughs> and they used like the same snare, the same like... Yeah, the 808 snare and the same orchestra hit. Mm -hmm. Same hit. And you could say it got overly... Well, he, he might have been the only producer doing it. I don't know how many producers were doing it. But it kind of made that sound. Like we identify that thing with that era of genre. Well, there, 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 there are certain things that are that are genre defining like take reggaeton right every every song has the dembo rhythm that boom ta boom ta boom ta boom ta like you have to have that drum pattern in order for it to be that you know house needs a four on the floor um trap trap only has it really only has four or five drum patterns like when mm -hmm. like when you break it down like kick patterns there's really only four or five trap kick patterns mm -hmm. um and and you could kind of flip them with how with how like where you put your roles and stuff like that, but I was gonna. But the well, actual the the actual like like an eight oh eight is just a sine wave, bro. Like like experiment with a with it a little bit. Like nobody nobody would know about nobody would know about uh nobody would know about XX uh Tentacion if it wasn't if it wasn't for that that crazy lo-fi 808 bass that he had in his first song that that you know that made him a sensation because it just sounded um so different you know and so and, and so rage filled you know mm -hmm. um i had a sub point let me kind of dig it out of my brain uh I lost my train of thought oh just like guitars <clears throat> like acoustic guitars and acoustic guitars and acoustic guitar we still use it today like what makes the song different it's just the way we use the acoustic guitar it just so happens in my opinion i'm saying this is my narrative for the 808 the spins 808 it just so happens that you know the spin 808 is the 808 we decided to be the thing however that happened whoever made it popular enough but again there's different styles of acoustic guitar i guess you could say technically but they sound similar yeah, there's di huh. there's there's different processing. Listen, I'm not saying like I'm not saying that using using the uh, using the spins 808 makes you you know makes you a punk or anything like that. What I'm saying is, if you want to be a super producer, you need to not use the fucking spins 808. Mm -hmm. Cause the, beca because 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 again, it it goes back to it goes back to like okay, if that's what you want, if that's what you're in this for, you have to you have to add something new. You have to push the culture forward. You know what I mean? Like Travis Scott, right? He's the he's he, he's the you know he he kind of he kind of put a new spin on trap. That's not the spins eight oh eight. It's the ready eight oh eight. So now a bunch of people are using the ready eight oh eight. You know, 
But instead of in instead of instead of instead of looking at what Travis Scott and being inspired what he did by having the courage to go outside of the stock 808, you know, because now, you know, granted, it doesn't come stocks with with FL Studio, but it's but it's so that sound is that sound is everywhere. It's a stock sound like that's that's how I look at it. Like it's 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 cheese right now. It's a stock sound, you know, mm. so if we're so so now people are chasing that that ready 808 sample instead of being like hold on wait i can use my ear i could trust myself and say and say yo i like this 808 sample i'm gonna use this like like i i have an 808 that i use i i use i use it on every single beat and Mm -hmm. um every time i do a stream um somebody new comes in and they're like whoa how do you get your 808 to sound like that because the spins 808 you got to do you got to do some finessing to get it to sound right so because so many people are used to producing like that they don't even know that there's all these amazing that there's all these amazing sound designers who have created new 808s that you don't need to do shit to you could just you could just throw them in your sampler and go you know um you said something just before your last point. Can you track like one step back? It was before the the point about. I was I, I was talking about Travis Scott and how and how oh, he Travis. and how he used the new eight oh eight, and then other people just started using the eight oh eight that he was using, and I was I, I was just you know challenging everybody that instead of that instead of following the next big eight oh eight why don't you just why don't you just use another you know another 808 because the because the 808 is it makes up it makes up such a huge part of the frequency spectrum and it's such a it's such a big deal to the actual mix that if you can find a sample that isn't popular but that sounds good rappers are still gonna like it rappers don't know what the spins 808 is they're not like oh you use the spins 808 so i gotta buy this beat as long mm. as 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 long as you're using as long as you're using like the Zaytoven kit or you know the the Lex Luger kit, but you pick a different damn 808, that's one step uh, closer you are to forging your own sound, you know. And it's just it's just little flips like that that get you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a I think there's a million ways to make our own sound. Real quick for the Travis Scott point, this pulled up a thought. I think he just totally ran with Kanye's. Um, like 808s and heartbreak sound. Oh yeah. Or like the dark what's it dark twisted fantasy? Yeah, that dark fantasy. Album. Yeah, he's like he, he's he's like a cross in between those two albums. I mean, he even sounds like Kanye when he when he raps, dude. Yeah. I he think was he that... was he he was an understudy of Kanye and T.I. Mhm. And he's like he, right. he's yeah, he, he's kind of he's he's kind of like like Travis Scott is like is like is like Kanye with no substance in his lyrics. You know? interesting because uh, because he does a similar thing he's a he's an amazing curator he's he's a real producer like not 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 like not like not like we're not real producers but he's he's a he's a he i'm sorry that's the wrong way to put it he's like a class he's a producer in the classical sense you know where he can get a whole bunch of people in the room and get the most out of them or get the sound that he wants out of them i should say so real quick we got to wrap it up but blood dragon has a good question he says Where's the fine line between trying to make hit records and focusing on chasing the hit sound, uh, making business? Wait, hold on. I read that completely wrong. Let me reread it. Blood Dragon says, where's the fine line between trying to make hit records and focusing on chasing the hit making business to just making music without caring where it's ever going to go? So how do we balance trends with with? like our own sound per se well that's the first of all that's not a fine line that's a very broad line if you want to make music to please yourself you just you just do that um as far as as far as making hits i gonna be honest with you i've never made a hit i don't know if games made a hit so i don't feel i don't feel qualified to really speak on that i know some things that people who have made hits have told me and i think that all of you guys who are who are interested in making hits I think that you should. Um, you hear that? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, that was freaking me out. But I think. Oh my bad. I forgot you can hear it. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that if you if you really want to know the answer to that question, you should you sh- you should find um you should find someone if you know if, if if you're in a major if you're in a major city you should find someone who's who's actually made a hit. 
and uh, and and see if you can get into the studio with them. Whether it's whether it's an engineer, and engineers are actually good people to to talk about hit uh, to talk about hits with B- better better than producers because. Uh, I don't want to like spend. I don't want to harp on the engineer part, but the the engineers are the people who turn songs into hits because it has it it has a lot to do, believe it or not, with uh with how everything fits into the frequency spectrum, mm-hmm. and I'm then it, and then and and then it has a lot, and then it has and then it has a lot to do with with the hook, which is something which is something that we don't write. You know what I mean? So there there aren't like there's this perception that that producers are are the huge part of the of the hit making process but they really aren't they're a huge part of of the marketing process because people are so people are so prone to familiarity that if somebody produces a big song a hit making artist will seek out the person who made the big song to, so that they can work with somebody who's made a big song, you know what I mean, and then they'll get it mixed by someone who's mixed a big song, you know. But you can't. It's 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 very hard to sit down at a DAW and be like, I'm gonna make a hit, and you don't and you don't have anybody to write the top line because because I don't know, game. Do you agree? I mean, the 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 top line is seventy five percent of a hit record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Diego Ave, who's a multi Grammy winning, multi platinum producer, who's my good friend, he said, writing his stories. He says it's not the beat that's that's a hit; it's the song that's a hit. Yeah, dude. Like, like for example, if uh, you, you know the song "Boot Up" by LMA, "Boot Up" that one. Yeah. If I, that's all I know, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if you made that beat, would you be like, "Oh, this is a hit beat"? It's. I don't even know what the beat sounds like. It's straight with it. dude, it, dude. It's 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 three chords in an eight oh eight clap. Like it's 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 <laughs> it's the the beat goes dun dun dun, and there and and and, and there, it's it's not even like, like there's no there's no melody to it. It's just it's just three held chords, and mm-hmm. uh and some eighty five beat per minute trap drums. That that's it. It's it's the the beat is actually horribly generic. You know, Mm -hmm. so I don't I don't think that I don't think that um, it behooves producers to chase a hit sound. I think there I think there are some producers who are who are who are good at like the whole Internet game. And, um, you know, they 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 come up with a sound that's very desirable for uh, um, for like people who are leasing beats and stuff like that. And then and then they transition um, into the industry, you know, some artists recognize them and they, you know, and they, and they wind up in the industry. But the reason, the reason why they're successful as the industry is because of the artists that they're working with. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think, True, that, I, mean, I think, you, you know, Blood Dragon, that's, that's, th- so that's, th- that's how you approach that line is you want to, uh, you want to just realize that you're only making, you're only making 25% of the, you know, of, of the hit record. You know what I'm saying? You've got, you, you've got, you've got the top line to worry about and then you, and then you've got the mix to worry about. So you, so in my opinion, you could kind of chill out with, the, with putting the stress on yourself of trying to make a hit and just, and just make something that excites you. I think, I think a good measure um, for if your shit is good or not is, does it give you goosebumps? Right? So a, you know when you listen to music it's supposed to, it's supposed to make you feel something it's it, it's not supposed to be a it's not supposed to be a mathematical experience it's supposed to it's supposed to hit you somewhere like when you play this beat do you feel a way does it does it evoke an emotion did you did you put it together so well that your arm that the hair on your arm stands up when when you hear it you know if you did if you did that you you made you made something undeniable you know what I'm saying? If you didn't do that, then you made something that you're going to need a lot of help from an artist on. Mm-hmm. And it's even harder when you hear hear the song a thousand times and you get so used to it. Mm-hmm. It's even harder. But I have to make runs today. I got to wrap it up on this end at least. Yeah, bro. Um, I, yeah, I want to make some music, bro. It's eight o'clock over here. But I appreciate you joining again. Craftmaster on the uh, to your top left. 
to my right, but your top left <laughs> is Craftmaster on the uh, semi big screen. Um, again, we have these chats every Thursday. Um, what's okay? It's four. No, it's five your time. So every Thursday, two p.m. Pacific time, five o'clock uh, Eastern five time. Eastern time. Um, last week I had company. I couldn't uh, do the live stream. Isabella, we're going to be making more videos too because y'all thought her other video was hilarious. I make more videos. Mm, shout game, out to Taylor. Game had he, some company. No, I was going to say <laughs> shout out. Cut me, cut me before my shout out to my my uh, favorite girl, Taylor, uh, who sent me a clip of Sunny Digital using hits as like a way to um, accent his beats or whatever. Because we were talking about Sunny Digital earlier. She okay. sent me something on Instagram. I just wanted to shout her out. Love that girl. Love you, girl. Taylor. Um, at, at, or excuse me, yeah, at producer underscore. Nicole Nick, so you can go follow her there. We're gonna be doing some cool stuff in the future, future. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up. Got a lot to do. But I appreciate you again. Um, do you have any shout outs before you wanted to any um... nah, shout out to everybody in the chat, bro. I appreciate you guys, man. Y'all I, I I've been live streaming uh beat creation video since Monday, bro. And and my and, and my chat's been rocking with me all week. I'm I'm like I'm I'm like blown away. I figured they'd be tired of my voice by now, bro. So I so I appreciate y'all boys, man. Uh you guys that are in games chat, man, if you if y'all ever want to see me cook up, you know, I, I I know it's in I know it's in um in another doll, but I I go over I go over a lot of gems as far as like mixing and as far as as far as sound design and just uh and just creating melodies and chords um use using the piano roll not 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 using instruments if you guys are interested in seeing some different compositions stop by um craftmaster productions on youtube you know subscribe hit the bell catch what catch some of my live streams man i'd love to see you guys over there and any questions you have i'll be happy to answer mm -hmm. the bell makes youtube so much of a different experience yeah too. you gotta have the bell man you gotta you, gotta, you got you gotta ring that bell bro you see that little thumbnail on your screen you're like <laughs> yeah. oh shoot you know whatever but all right, guys, I got to wrap it up. I appreciate everybody for joining in today. Let's produce a chat. Peace.